Hello and welcome. This is Peter Kalingai and welcome to Creating Art. Um, it's my series of usually uh, creating art uh, pinups, commissions, uh, drawings. Uh, this particular one is a cover for Second Sight Studio. Uh, and for a fellow by the name of Bradley Golden um, for a, a book called Victoria Black and I'm just getting set up here uh, this is streaming live on YouTube so if you feel like it then uh, comment, comment in, in the live comment stream, but I'll mostly be focusing on what I'm doing. Uh, try to be interactive when I can. Um, starting with a fresh page, uh, and this is going to be uh, essentially 8 by 11 um, original art. And I already have the basic design, which I'll show you once I'm done measuring this out. Um, but, uh, yeah, don't know too much about the book itself or the creative team, uh, but I put a link in the description box to the Facebook group where you can check it out and read all about it. Uh, not only Victoria Black, but other comics coming out through Second Sight. Second Sight Studios. Um, and this one is way different than what I've done previously. You know, the last couple have been sort of live streaming events, hangouts. Um, you know, live streaming means directly on YouTube. For those not familiar, And, you know, I've, I've recorded all, you know, up until nine. I left off. I got to get back to that storm commission. I got to finish that off. But uh, got a lot on my plate, this cover being one of them. And I figured this would be an awesome way to do it. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody has... Uh, <laughs> Try to stream eight hours, and I'm fool enough to try. So uh, I'll give it a shot here. And you know, I might be clicking around at times, just checking things. But okay, so that's the space it's going to be in. Uh, forgive me if you don't see the whole thing all in one. But I believe this is the uh, best way to see it. Anyway, that's that's the very bottom. That's the top. All right. So here's my plan for that I made for myself. Um, I'm going to try to go eight hours, and you know, if I go all eight hours, I'll succeed. Here's a sort of a sketch of what I'm going to be doing with the lettering. Um, and where's the good one? Where's the good one? 
It's so going to be that. Let's hold on. Yes, that, was, that was a good one. Alright. I don't want to confuse you, but okay. So, essentially, this one is what I'm going to try to be doing not to confuse you. Alright, so this is this is going to be the, the cover and fall. It's going to have a sort of full pin-up shot of her on the left. Hopefully you'll see her arms and down to her feet. Uh, there'll be a column behind her that I imagine will be white or something simplistic. Uh, and this big logo, which is, uh, I don't make things easy for myself. Victoria uh, Black. And then this, this line, speed line, and that's her on her. And this will be um, not cartoony, but simplistic. I apologize for any cat hairs that you see. Um, and so that will be on top. Then sort of directly below that, you'll be seeing a cityscape. Um, and the main action will be her on her ninja bike being chased by two cat cars uh, and she'll be far, firing off to one of them. Um, and let's see. Uh, I'll have to decide, but <laughs> she'll either be driving right or driving left and firing um, to the cop car. Did you see that? Firing off to the cop car. So, okay. So I want to make clear that at any point, this hangout can fail. <laughs> um, I could... I could hit the webcam, which is right above, right in front of me, and it could freeze up, and I can uh, get knocked out of the hangout, to which point I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll not have achieved what I was set up to achieve. Um, That's, I'm just doing measurements right now. This is sort of, it's a complicated cover. Like I said, I'm not going to make it easy for myself. Okay, so I could get knocked out. Um, another thing that could happen is since I was, since I've essentially been up for the most part since 4 a.m., Uh, working since then on stuff, I could very well fall asleep. <laughs> so if I fall asleep, then uh, I also failed to meet my challenge. <laughs> um, what else could happen? Uh, if I go on break, and never come back. Uh, that would be bad. In fact, I meant to, I meant to do a couple of things earlier, but you get to see me fumble around.
All right. If I go on break, you'll see this sign. Uh, but if I'm gone, you know, I'm kind of giving myself five minutes each hour. But if I'm gone for longer than 15 minutes, then I failed this challenge. Um, I don't know. All, all sorts of uh, things going to happen. Uh, I plan to do this mostly as a solo show. Um, but I could. I'll probably invite some people later on. Uh, to uh, sort of egg me on as well as uh, <clears throat> encourage me, maybe uh, just, you know, criticize my work. <laughs> um, let's see, how did I do it? That's right, where's the good one? But this will show, you know, this will show. I should get some tape. This will be helpful. Always have tape. This will show my process of putting a piece together. And, uh, I like this logo design, so I'm taping it up in front of me so I don't have everything on the table that uh, will defeat the purpose. So I can copy what I liked just by seeing it in front of me. All right, what else do I got to keep in mind for now? Yeah, go there. <clears throat> Um, new to me, I've been working in the comic industry since 1991. My name is Peter Palmiati. I've been mostly an inker. I worked for Valiant, uh, Marvel, DC, uh, most known for working on Aquaman over at DC back when he had a, a hook and a beard and long hair. Uh, some say that was the cool version. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm also an artist, but, uh, you know, I'm not as confident with my pencils. It varies. Sometimes I'm hot. Sometimes, you know, I run cold. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I figured if I really just push myself, I'll do the kind of piece I want to. Okay. But yeah, one of the things is I'm going to try to keep chatting away during this. Which is kind of difficult. So I'm trying to focus. <laughs> All right. That's the end of this will be thicker. This will all be. I don't want to do too much of this detail, but I figured I'll create this sort of wispy. Direction this is going to take. Let's see. Um, you know, other than, you know, for the logo, it's straight on lettering, Victoria Black. I figured you'll definitely be able to read it. It's a little unique, and by putting speed line with these 
simplified her on on her ninja motorcycle that that would really stand out from anything else you've seen uh that's my logic so i'm just going to very loosely put the last letter there and the V over here. I could me measure each letter out, um, which I might do and give it blocks and whatnot, but I'm more going to focus on, let's see, this comes a little deeper, say. Let's see. This would be a little shorter. All right, so I made that just a tiny bit shorter, that just a tiny bit bigger because I want the black to fit over here just a little more fooling around and I'll get that basic shape right <laughs> yeah so I figured you know like one of the reasons I want to talk throughout the video is um I mean, to talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it, so it's not entirely boring, but also because I'm not expecting a lot of people to watch this per se. I, I expect some people to like maybe listen to a good part of it, maybe pick some points <laughs> along the video. You know, I don't know how many people listen to eight hours of audio, uh, especially if I wasn't talking for long gaps. So I figure those few, I'll give them something to listen to. See if this works. This is there. And that is here. Let's throw it a little off. I basically eye everything. Now, so if this is okay, that's enough space. Well, I know what I wanted to do. It should be a bigger. Um, this is a little rough. Uh, let me just go up there with that one. All right. Maybe even have that dip a little more. So. Okay. Get the rise. 
closer to that size. And it's almost not quite like the high point is where this line is. The separation of image and let's see how's it go. I'm gonna give see I'm kind of figuring that the studio logo and the issue number will be over here. So it has to go a little further down. Let's say the here. So let's work this again. my phone. Okay, so Victoria and Black. Now, mind you, if this isn't exactly you know, um, isn't exactly doesn't fit the cover exactly right. Um, stuff can be done later digitally that can shrink and enlarge things. So I think this is is sufficiently. Um, it will sufficiently give enough space up here in the corner. I don't have to have that there because this is going to be a blank area as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's kind of close to here and has a gap there. I could see if you go a little. Let's say it like that. I want the flow to be natural in that. So yeah, I would like it to be flush, but you know. Even like that's a point. I can even make this a point. Uh, yeah. kind of be, I'll have to figure out thickness later on. That, that, that would kind of be like that anyway. So you wouldn't even see that. I wouldn't run that. I don't want it run that close. I guess it can be there. I'm going to focus on that later. This whole video of me working on the logo wouldn't be entirely. Actually, it's that's right. Okay, let's just sit there for the time being until I can focus entirely on it. Um, the goal, if if I really had a set a goal for myself, would be to pencil and start inking. I doubt I'm going to finish this within eight hours. You know, the nature of 
uh, doing these hangouts is interactive. Let's see. To some degree. All right, so it's kind of a big to do for a logo. But let's just assume. Sorry, <laughs> cat's trying to get in the studio. I have it blocked, but you never know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Thor. I'm just fudging this in. So if you imagine this, let's see, that space, logo, I wish I could get the whole thing on camera, but, um, so all this space, and there is the rest of it, so her figure is to uh, sort of put her in. Loosely, oh, that's a big head. This is Victoria Black, full figure in um, okay. In this shot, that's gonna be here. Uh, she's gonna be on the motorcycle in full gear uh, with a helmet on. So right here. 
here. And you'll be able to see her. Maybe I'll make it. Where she's not in her jacket, leather jacket, leather motorcycle jacket. Assuming I have full reign to do. <laughs> to play as I will. One of the advantages of, yeah, it being the computer age now is if he doesn't like part of it, I can redo. All right, I'm just going to check. Uh, somebody did a smiley face. Message I have to answer. always messages um, typically you know, as I'm trying to do uh, during the day uh, my work day is to uh, leave the internet alone yeah I might while I work or you know uh, listen to them mostly, or uh, listening to podcasts or music is actually better. Okay, so we got two quadrants already taken care of. I'm not sure if this is this is too much, maybe. You know, I got all this space. Let's say, just for argument's sake, that I give that a line. You know, you really like when you create an image, you. You feel like, you know, it comes clearer and clearer the more you work on it. Um, now I'm trying to figure out what I like better. I like this better. Okay. I like her going left. Um... I just want to tweak this a tad.
Okay, I have to take care of a request. Hold on. Sorry about this. Something came up. All right, sorry about that. I am back. Okay. So where was I? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have her driving left. There's all sorts of like flows going, like flows like that, and then this goes and flows like that. She'll appear to be flowing like that. And maybe this is not the way she's going to be standing, but <laughs> maybe that will be shifting a certain way uh, just to uh, mix things up a bit. Yeah, what I wanted to look at, is I think this is fine. Okay. I'm trying to gauge, like, is this enough of a calm? And that looks fine. This is enough space to fit in the city in the background. Her fighting off two cops here. I think I'll make this a little lower, shorter. Put that inch and a half. By a little bit, by a lot. Let's see. You know what? Maybe I won't make it too big. Let's see. Make it, what is it? Make it three quarters. Okay. I think that will work better. I made it like an inch and a half, but it seems bulky. You know, this is just going to be, this will be a white area. Or some color that works, just a flat color. Um, down here, 
kind of keeping in mind how, you know, like the, up here will be the studio logo, the uh, number of the comic and the price. Down here will be plenty of room for the creator names, the writer, artist, um, inker. I think that, um, not sure if the artist is his own inker, if they have an inker, but it doesn't matter. You can fit one name or three names right there. So I'll get rid of this. That will give me plenty of room for that. Okay. Now this is where I start engaging the central image. Um, I I just you okay. <laughs> Anybody wondering? I'm just using regular number twos. And they smudge a lot. It's a soft lead. Um, I don't want to. Not that I'm keeping that. That's not final pencil. Um, but it's it's a, a approximate what she's going to look like. So before I go into harder final pencils. And I'm not I'm not a, a clean final penciler <laughs> at all, uh, but this is gauging, you know, how much space things are taking. I mean that that's pretty close to what the final would be up there, and this is pretty close to her height, although the body's off. Uh, so I do want to keep that. All right, so we got two cup cars and her on her ninja mice by uh, motorcycle. So I think I think what I'll do is even by a little. Break, break that line with just the, her front tire. Um, okay, assume her front tire is bigger than her back tire. Let's just block out approximate bike takes up this much space there's some sort of front to it and she's sitting can you see this I should I can't bend the camera sorry <laughs> um, I think you can see, yeah, you can see. Okay. Uh, her, her butt's approximately over there. She's maybe leaned back. Or actually, she should be. Yeah, I'm going to have to really work on this to get it looking right. Um, 
She is firing her gun. Should look like it's firing. <laughs> Even for a loose sketch. Okay. So she's driving from there. I'm gonna see. Say like a cop car here. Let's see, we can see the, this cop car firing. I'm just saying for the sake of argument that that's it coming sort of directly at us. Um, and this is sort of going off. So you see the back of the car there. This one's actually more like the final version will probably look like, and that's just, it's too much of a top-down um, not sure I'm going to have to this is where I need reference <laughs> But just getting the players on the board. Next thing to figure out is I'm going to sort of leave that. No, that's not going to work. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see the bottom. Okay. Let me give me another scrap of paper. I'm going to start figuring things out. Okay, happy with this and the positioning and size. Uh, sort of happy where I'm gonna have to tweak it somewhat. Uh, more of a instead of instead of straight on. Well, instead of straight on, more like at an angle. I don't know uh, <laughs> if you can see what I was doing. And all right, so we could sort of say that that car trajectory is like that. This one.
was maybe like like that. And her. Something like, something like that. Like, there's a little swerve to her. <laughs> All right. Now the tricky part. Hmm. The tricky part. Is. That we're not going to see all this. That that space is going to be actually. Part of the cityscape behind them. So this is. Thinking territory. And we're almost at 6 o'clock already. Woohoo. One hour down. Seven more to go. All right. Grr. All right. This is kind of easy, but <laughs> the beginning and the end. <laughs> That's the easy parts. Um, okay, I'm thinking a lot of things this is an important factor for the image uh, Bradley also wants oh, it's fine, well that's easy, you know as a cop Firing from here is going to be the, the cop in the pass uh, in the passenger in the driver's seat. Firing here, and depending on where things fit best, I'll show multiple shots from everyone. Maybe kind of. But she's on a motorcycle, so she's going to have one. Actually, yeah, I could do this. Her arm looks a little stiff. And shoulder too high up. I don't know. Um, Let's just say that's more like it. Kind of has the handles. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta figure out a lot about that. Okay. That's where it's more like further sketches of the actual figure and whatnot but I want to get I want to get the, uh, the background in how am I gonna fit that in hmm all right I guess I'm gonna have to do it in the sketch stage because this is going to uh, be more complicated so I guess I'll, I'll take my first break uh, thank you all who are viewing right now. I'll be back in hopefully five minutes. <laughs> uh, have to refresh my coffee and whatnot. Um, I'll turn off the audio just because I make a lot of noise. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back by six thereabouts. If I'm gone too long, then I fail. 
but I'll, I'll return.
And hope you're still with me. Took a short break. Protecting the door against stray cats. And I'm back. All right, so. Before I get into really getting gangs reference, um, Killer is going to be the bike, cop cars, and you know, it all has to do with my style. Um, yeah, this is this is just going to be logo up here, and this will be her. Like I said, not necessarily. You know, out for, per se. Um, okay. Messages, nothing important. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, nothing important. Everything looks good. Just check one thing. Things don't go as fast <laughs> when, I, when I'm streaming. My apologies. Right. Things look good. Okay, good. Um, I sent the message uh, to my Um, what do you call it? My Skype comic group, which is we get together weekly, sometimes uh, every other week, uh, and chat about, you know, everything. <laughs> uh, sometimes what projects we work. It's a, it's a personal hangout, so it's not public, so it's, I'm going to do this, put you off to the side, bring you up here, okay, I'm center, all right, so, we'll do this really small. So that's one cock car. Say, for the sake of argument, that's the other. That's Victoria. In the center, there's sort of speed lines behind them. Now there's is like a little area over here of there. and over here has space um then sort of like mostly up here not a lot of space well somehow in here, I want to fit in cityscape. <laughs> um, now, if you've been following me at all, um, if you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. I hope you've been. Uh, are a subscriber. If not, please do. Uh, you know, I create comics. I create 
I do video. I'll get back to podcasting. I do hangouts uh, with other creators and talk about business of art and uh, do all sorts of art videos. So subscribe if you haven't. Um, and if you want to support my efforts, go to patreon.com slash Peter Palmiati. So I want to, oh, so I was going to mention the uh, Inktober pieces that I've been doing. And there's a couple of them that I did, like a, I sort of warped the edges of background, foreground, and sort of made it a fisheye kind of uh, lens effect. And I'm thinking, you know, the cars end about here. What if well, this, this car sticks out a little more than this car? Which is a little less. All right, and approximately, I could stick a horizon line right here and sort of indicate that is actually flying up you know coming a little more at us and this car like already went over the hill and is hitting ground and, and turning this way. So that kind of works, and that gives me just a slight little extra bit of room to where this whole area can be the cityscape behind them and like I did with a couple of those Inktober pieces uh, for my comic Bobby B-Boy um, I do a little bit, bit of fish islands and now I gotta figure out well how exactly would that look Um, so let's say this horizon line is a little bit like a mountaintop. So this would be a little more scrunched, and you'll see more of the front. So actually, a little more like that. Maybe push back a little, and that everything in between here and here.
think, let's say, um, let's say that's almost doubles as a panel border. Um, hmm. We shall see. Colors don't matter. No. There will be separation. This little this little border I made here, uh, it's on this side, is just for me. Hmm. No, yeah, that's right. Um, that's just for me. This is where I'm gonna. All this space is going to be done. so the page will be to the end of the outer and everything inside that's 8 by 11. So, uh, which means, you know, once, once it's printed, uh, there's going to be extra space. Uh, Oh, you know, if I'm going to be an actual colorist on this, um, then I'll, I'll resize everything and tweak things, and you know, I can stretch things and further do all that jazz. But that's my working space. So, all right. So if that's the little hump, then this is where we have to create a world. So to get back, uh, and this is what we're going to focus on. So how do I create infinity behind them? I was thinking of, sort of, sort of thinking of it as an animated movie a little bit. Like, let's have some buildings in perspective. You know, the bonds of, of which are behind the hill. So if I you know, um, thinking of it also as maybe somebody like Will Eisner, where this isn't going to be, you know, like ruled out lines for buildings with precise square rectangles and triangles. And no, this, this is all going to be freehand um, to make it look more natural. Let's say there's one, like that will be the tallest building. There's a building rooftop behind that one that you can see. Like this building just just barely that's in front of that one. Uh, 
has a thin roof there. But there's some sort of pinpoint right out there. So there's barely a slit of a side. Um, and there's I don't know, some sort of yeah, just a group of buildings like that, right? So they're all bent, actually, like the shape of. Well, actually, uh... okay. well, I, if I leave this one out, this could be the street they come out. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so there's no it's an open space here. Those buildings. How I am is that it's a bad part of town. Um, and So let's remake it <laughs> and again to show you what I sort of have in mind. So this is this portion. This is that hill, the buildings. Perspective. Okay, and this is this cop car. front of the car, the hood of the car, almost like it's touching down, and this one has landed, maybe it looks like the front That's going to be difficult, but <laughs> you know, this tire is more in the car than this one. That's going to look strange, but and Victoria. again here. Okay. So then I'm sure I had one of these at hand. Perfect one. Okay. I want to start confusing the issue too much. Um, but yeah, how everything's a little warped and it's like. I think it's warped at the edges. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But what I'm thinking is because there's very little space here for me to work with. 
I'm going to have some sort of further buildings and maybe even like these are further out in the distance they're probably black or maybe washed out I'm not sure I'm relying on it looking washed out in a car but like there's a second building scape behind the more dimensional one in front of it. And this stuff is just jet black, has no wind, well, yeah, has no windows. You could always do that in color. But the important thing uh, to me would be that they're sort of following some sort of, you know, fisheye lens logic. You know, well, the, the foreground objects are in natural perspective and like this bottom part is in, in like real perspective but the stuff in the background uh, is more in a forced uh, fisheye lens perspective and I think that will get more the point across that there's, you know, like layers. Like now, something I haven't gotten into, uh, but this is um, you get the, the the critical elements in first, then you and build on. Um, I'm assuming like they're supposed to be going uh, you know it's a real car chase uh, and motorcycle chase uh, going down streets of the city and at this particular moment they're like in an alleyway. So this is all is plenty of room here. There's some room here. Um, and there's like bits of room here and there. Uh, just for argument's sake. I got like a trash can. Over there. This is the alleyway, then maybe bits of it, you know, are like when you see like all the streets, the tar gives way to like the bricks beneath so maybe it has a patch or two let's say over here all right now you're gonna say well that looks the wall but 
it would be in, a, in, in perspective, you know, um, like I said, this bottom portion is in a sort of its own perspective and that will be you know, it's a hill running down that way. So it's in a natural one point perspective. So these bricks can be closer together here, smaller and further apart here and bigger. Um, and you know, there's different ways I, I can do it, but even if they're not, you know, I could do actual like lines like this, even if they're only subliminally, um, even if they don't fit the sort of, you know, speed lines of the path of the, the three uh, vehicles in motion. Uh, just to, to give you more perspective, but the this is just going to be a lot of some trash on the ground. It's going to look beat up. Um, you know, like I said, uh, I'll add it somewhere. I suppose some bricks. Uh, I just want to have maybe papers flying, and that that can you know also like cover the background like i could have a piece of paper here it would be totally white against all that and yeah what i mentioned about like doing a sort of will eisner buildings that they're not going to be exactly straight or exactly perfect maybe be sort of freehand uh and a little bit of a forced fisheye perspective all right so so i'm liking my logic but how to make it work uh, just want to take a little more time figuring that before moving on to the heavier, you know, really like tightening up the three major elements on on the cover itself. Okay, so consider that they're covered. Two cow cars and her. Bullets are flying everywhere. That's also going to be another repetitive image on the cover. A uh, bullet, you know, couldn't randomly be being shot because this is um, this car is flying at us. You know, maybe when they were over here, there was a bullet being shot like. Which is a good idea. Let me see some speed line for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the top part, let's say just randomly, that's, that's the first tier. In buildings. That's the second one behind it. Now, if I bend it more like that,
So that means, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry if I stopped talking. Drop my own logic. All right, so. So I could have like, you know, the opposite sort of line of the hill and have these curve like towards the corner points. Maybe uh, maybe as if they're om almost pulled, like, let's do this. that and I'll be the opposite over here. Oh wait, do you see what I'm saying? Okay, sorry, I was throwing off camera. So it's almost like this side is pulled to that corner on that side is pulled that. Now every line doesn't have to um, work to that log logic. Um, Well, actually, <laughs> what I'm saying is wrong. Okay, every line will will work to that logic. Um, it just doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm kind of thinking now that. anybody remembers Frank Miller on Daredevil uh, Ink by Klaus Jensen uh, they did something well I'm not sure if Frank did it but or Klaus initiated they did something like this which might or might not work I'll decide when I get there, but nailed uh, all I need to as far as what I want to be doing farther in the background. And I could take it like multiple steps further. Um, sorry, I keep going off camera. Um, it, it did a lot of feathering within the outlines of the building, so I can I can do the outline like like I said like sort of that they're leaning towards the the, the end you know the top part of where the image will be, and you know these are straight, so ignore that fact, but that the feather you know. Instead of solid black or or white for that matter, I'll do sort of heavy feathering to light, heavy light as I go down. And because it's more like, you know, more like buildings will be leaning um, feathering might also do the same just 
doing this fast. Uh, but that's, that's a lot of choices. Uh, I'm happy with that. I hope I remember that when I get around to it. That's like all that detail um, can really wait until you know, figure out exactly, you know, do tight enough pencils on them, tight enough pencils on her. Um, and maybe throw one or two things in front of them, but mostly uh, keep them in front of everything else. Uh, and then I could, I could probably ink these four and then uh, work out the rest of the stuff uh, after I have them drawn. Uh, part of the advantage, <laughs> the advantages of being penciler and anchor is that I could do piecemeal stuff. Um, oh, we'll see how that works. <laughs> hey, Tristan. Yes. Um, sort of working out details to a uh, the cover I'm, I'm building. <laughs> um, let's see, I got any messages there. What do I got? What do I got? Oh, hey. My old friend Rich Pollard, uh, who I inked over on Razor, has a new Facebook page called Rich Pollard's Forever Heroes. Awesome. Of course, I like it. I already told my friends. I gotta go back there and read it. Okay. Okay. At least it sent me a message. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, keep busy, take a little break each hour, short break. Uh, Lisa's gonna be cooking dinner. I was expecting it in ten minutes, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to fit food in at some point. Uh, I had a late lunch, so before I started this, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't much of anything. I had a sandwich. All right, so what do I need to know? So this is my city logic. I don't need that right now. That gets stored away elsewhere. Drinking corn. All right. Um, I need to work out the details concerning her on the bike and off the bike and what the bike looks like. All right, so I don't need any of that. Uh, I, I make a lot of drawings. <laughs> Uh, sketches. I mean, <laughs> okay, so kind of fudged around. Um, I saw an image of the character, and she's sort of where it's black, so she's got. It. Black boots, black pants, black jacket, black helmet, black bike. Um, actually, I, I should pull that up. Um, let's 
see. All right. So you won't see this, but um, just pictures. But it was sort of a painted picture I'm going by. And where are you? Too many pictures, too many versions. Okay, here we go. And yeah, I didn't see him post the picture, so I'm not going to share it with everybody. Uh, okay, yeah, it just has her shooting Uzis and it looks almost like the um, like thin cloth tight to the body pants um, some sort of possibly leather at least sleeves to to her top, uh, maybe something um, you know, protecting her breasts or showing off her breasts. I'm not even sure, um, but I'm just supposed to go off of that image. So, and holding a bike because she can't possibly ride a motorcycle without holding <laughs> on onto it. And then the other, if that's an Uzi, that's an, then that's an Uzi and that's that'll be easy to look up. Uh, then she's got a helmet. But much much like I'll be making up the helmet. I'll be making up the bike. Um, and the only description I got was it was a ninja bike. So perhaps do I have reference? Did I pull? Uh, not in there. No, I just um, didn't bother. <laughs> So, I guess the next, the next step is um, reference. And I'm going to do a lot of making stuff up. Um, I think here... I'd almost like her in a different outfit, although essentially similar, like tough girl looking. But like, I see her. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure which way she'll be facing her. Uh, what pose she'll be having. But I think you know. I think the head's in. A, I'd like a head like that. Show a little chin. Get those shoulders in there. Um, but she, she could be shifted a little more shoulder wise. <sighs> but yeah, just like a regular string black t shirt. You know, this way when I go in and ink. I'll do a lot of highlighting and folds, maybe, I don't know. And, and the pants and the cover, well, the pants she wear on the bike are, are tight, but maybe she's wearing jeans here. You know, I, I just think it would be interesting to see her see much of her here she's got a helmet so yeah you won't even see 
with much uh, strands of hair coming out the back or something, maybe a little bit. Uh, but you know, I love I love heck. I love <laughs> drawing jeans and uh, and you know, sort of uh, maybe. A low cut t shirt and got a belly sticking out a little bit. Um, I would go further, but I don't know too much about the character. But that's okay. I'm just going to make it look sexy and tough. Because with, with a name like Victoria Black, that's uh, how it goes. Okie doke. I hope you're enjoying listening. Um, you know, I said this before. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying myself so far. Hopefully, I'm not too boring. Um, working out details for a cover I was uh, asked to do for a payment um, for a company called Second Second Sight. Studios, and uh, the commander in chief is Bradley Golden. Uh, in the description box, um, which you know, once once it uploads, I'll change the de details in that. Um, but you, you can read it now and figure out what I'm doing. But um, there is a link for the Facebook group with that. And check out uh, other books they're doing, and, and I think they have a uh, well. I have one link to a Victoria Black page uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Bradley uh, sent me page one, I believe it's page one, or an another page uh, that looks awesome. So, what am I looking for? Okay. I'm not giving you much in the sense of visuals at the moment, but I am looking for ninja bicycles. Uh, ninja motorcycles, actually. I I know I downloaded downloaded. Uh, yeah, saves. Some some picture there. Let me give these a good look. Uh, do I have any? Should I go this? Maybe. Uh, motorcycles are so tough. Well, I'll say this, like, um, well, um, I'm choosing reference and whatnot. Um, like, my style is pretty diverse, you know. Uh, I don't like the quality on there. Oh, oh the pain, the pain. Hmm, that's an interesting one. All right, kind of like that better. Wish things didn't look fuzzy. I don't like that bike. Is it just my eyes? Wait. No, that looks good now. That's the one I want. Okay. Saving image now. Thank you, Google Images. 
Alright. Oh, maybe I had oh. Let me open another one. Well, I did, I guess. Yeah, I don't like that one. Yeah, I don't like that one. When I say before, is no good. There's an actual picture of a... Um, What do I call it? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a black ninja bike. Totally black. And it's easy to see separation if it's color. Okay. So I got that. And now I need to go up here. Load, load, load. Okay. Okay, it's got to be... This works. Oh, I know I had a point before. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so my my artwork is is diverse, and sort of taking my cue from the cover he already has. Uh, um, and it's almost like um, I'm just going to describe it as a not tight detail is sort of like a digital painting um, with you know like almost splashes of shapes and whatnot so I'm kind of thinking a little bit along the lines uh, I, I really have to update my files yeah okay so do I want more yes I want another I need more of cop car reference that's kind of good either that or that one I don't need that because that's different okay That's not a cop car, that's a Lamborghini or something. It looks like that. It's a future cop car. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, I hate those three wheel cop cars. Small little, like, I think you could, looks like you can kick them over. That's not a cop car. All right, I'll take this one. It's pretty much in your face. That'll be good for details. Uh, there was one other. That one. Or that one. Maybe that. Or that. Uh -uh -uh. Uh, that looks like a All right, so I got some cop car reference. And she's toting an Uzi. So I might want to get an Uzi. Reference. Okay, she's facing that way. Blah blah. 
Okay, that's perfect. Some Uzi gun reference. It's kind of almost like a gun. Just a little bit different. Oh, it's just so you can, Tristan in the uh, streaming chat is asking where I get my reference. I go to Google. Um, if I'm if I'm looking for something really unique, I phrase things differently. Cause you you can you know ask for say like. red girl dress and that's pretty straightforward but you can um i don't know prom like red prom girl dress or just word differently and you get different images because i heard some people hate to take the top in images because everybody uses them uh Problem as far as I see it. Anyway, I need regular cop cars. I need a regular motorcycle for her. Um, yeah, I was talking about like how how the picture cover he sent me was it's sort of painted. You know, like the tightest thing on it is her face. Um, and. Which is good because you know, use it as the basis of the final image. Um, I'm thinking I'll take another short break soon, but I want to get started on so using my reference. All right, so I don't need. That this is a lot far the way. Check this. Those are in there. Good. Grab these. Put them in my Victoria Black file. So, um, just in case you didn't know and were curious, I'm currently. Working on two things at the moment. I'll have a third thing coming up. Um, but I'm working on a comic called End of Days, which I'm inking. And I'm doing this Victoria Black cover. And um, yeah, uh, so far, uh, I'm pretty happy. Let me actually see the camera. Pretty happy with what I got. I got the logo in place and a sort of little fancy twist to it. This is this is going to be a simple, a simp, simplified version of what you see here. Um, and you can see a full figure down to the tip of Victoria Black in street clothes. <laughs> I don't know if she has uh, certain outfits, but um, then this will be her motorcycle outfit, her 
um, I want to say like superhero outfit, but she's she's not a superhero. I think she's just like a renegade. Um, I I going by the name. She's a bad <laughs> bad girl, <laughs> uh, but she has a specific outfit that I'm gonna put her in. Um, but not that you're gonna see a heck of a lot. And I got I got um, reference for the motorcycle. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Okay. I got one pitch to go by. Is that so? Right, doing that. Okay. Um. Hmm. All right. This is actually going to be different. It's not going to be a point. Uh, I really have to figure out the logic to that. So, I think I'm going to take my break now, find out where how dinner's going. Um, this is going to be a challenge just to figure out her motorcycle and the cars and then her figure. So I have a lot, a lot of things to um, do tight, tighter pencils on, figuring out uh, the framework to everything. And like I said, I can, I can almost ink um, kind of those four objects, her full figure, her on a bike, and the two car cars before doing anything else on the cover. So I think I will uh, where are we? <laughs> yeah. I'll be back in hopefully less than fifteen. I know. That's right. Um but I'm, I'm going to try to go all eight hours, so stick around, leave it on, listen. I'm going to turn the volume off so I don't, you know, hear me crashing into things getting out of the studio. All right, be back.
and back. So, um, thank you for continuing to check this out. If you're watching this in the future, you can fast forward past the breaks. Do I have any messages? No. Nothing important. Stuff I can check out later. Okay. All right. Yeah, now to link that window. That window's a bit dang. A close up of what am I doing? Okay, this. It's more Let's see both. Okay. All right. So let's talk about my style before and the fact that I'm going to be penciling and inking this cover. Um, that you know, because I've been inking for years. All I need is a framework, uh, and then I can build on it in the inking stage. Um, you know, I can I can essentially do <laughs> the framework of a car I, I can really just do the, the bare minimum of outline to get the perspective correct and the size and um, build that up later so uh, what I'm trying to do is, uh, I see. Do squeeze it a little. Trying to get the image of the cop car and be able to see the hangout at the same time. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, I, I could if I get the framework in uh, of the key elements, uh, I could figure out what and uh, shadows I mean it's it's you know I'm gonna be a, a probably a night scene uh, flashing lights and um, the uh, trail of the vehicles um, the shots being fired you know it won't be all <laughs> pitch black, but um, I'll do a lot of uh, funky textures and detailing uh, and as I go. And uh, I'm really, I'm really doing this challenge at the worst time possible. Um, there's lots, lots of things going on in my life. Uh, well, today specifically was lots of bill paying and. We got some cats that, you know, because of where we live, we have to get rid of, um, you know, give to uh, 
hopefully friends of ours because they're, they're going to charge us. we got four cats. We only afford one, really. Um, which, you know, in the long run, it would be better for us having four, four cats in this house that, that's not, not a big home. It's too much. Um, for me to deal with, I have to uh, put a chair against my door just so they don't break in. And once they're in here, forget it, they throw stuff around. <laughs> it becomes a mess. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, that chaos, and and I swear, like I don't know what it is on uh, one of my eyes, the the lower lid. I don't know if it's a pimple or something, but it's a little puffy and kind of like hurts if I touch it. <laughs> so don't touch it. But I gotta figure out what, what the heck that is. But anyway, don't worry about me. I'm perfectly fine. Put myself up to this challenge, and I'm going to see it through. Hopefully, I'll make it to all eight hours. Um, oh, when I took my break, uh, Lisa had to drive her mom uh, uh, to the store. I'm not even sure when dinner is going to be. Uh, I'm not going to take a longer break just to have dinner, but you know, I'm gonna keep working through this. And okay, so I got my reference. Just figuring out the overall look of the kind of police car I want. The bare minimum. Um, well, much much in the same way I, I was mentioning before about not like using uh, like not not doing straight lines for the buildings in the background, uh, um, or even using a French. You know, nothing's going to be exactly product precise. Um, I'm going to uh, way too much. Okay, I'm going to do a lot of freehand with with my lines and tighten stuff up or loosen stuff according to you know just what i think looks better so i'm sort of just getting the essence of this cop car you know i don't know how much Detail will be in the final versions. I kind of like this car, cup car. This is one one of the uh, images I'm using. Looks like this. Uh, the other one looks slightly different. But essentially. Blue lights on one side, red lights on another. So we've got slightly darker in the middle. Um, yeah, it's it's like you get the the plastic <laughs> or whatever the the encasement is um, is not lit. Here, but it's um, there's more to it than that. But I keep that basic, uh, and it's even got more lights. I don't know. I'll keep it to that. And it's got 
side mirrors. So frontal view is essentially that. Um, and so a little trim to the sides and the top. You could essentially say that it's holding lights, it's black, uh, and depending on you'll be able to see the cops inside. And so Essentially, the front of view. So that's cool. Um, how I do this? Expand. Here's the other one. Yeah. Oh, way. Shrink. The other picture, okay. is it? Yeah, it kind of looks like the same car ish. Um, I guess. So, just to, uh, for practice, I mean, you know, I don't think I've. Mm -hmm. 
and essentially um, you know what I'm looking at is a uh, I guess it's more of a sheriff card yeah sheriff so that'll be two door prisoners and the peoples and the peoples be in there cops waving hello he's smiling As you can see, let me get rid of that so I can see. Uh, I got the two cars, and that is kind of like that, and that is kind of like that. The angles are different. Uh, this is where. Uh, out more of that detail so all right it's kind of like that how much of an angle I kind of want to make it look like he's going Coming up, coming over the hill. So, all right, just do basic shapes. It's not going to be rectangular, it will be like the back end is smaller, the front is bigger. Um, some portion of this will be off the cover. We're looking down. So we'll still see. It's somewhat looking into the front. So somewhat like that, but where we see a portion of the top, maybe cut it a little shorter. So how much, like this part, which looks big, if we make it a little piece, then the griddle. And this is the hood. This is the top hood. see it more from the side hmm a little bit a little bit that's kind of making sense
Yeah, so that would work. Like, if we have one cop's head. Sticking out just a tad. Maybe his hat flying off. <laughs> One cop, hat flying off, arm pulled outside the door, gun in hand, shit, firing off a couple of rounds. There, his partner driving like a maniac <laughs> over there. Then uh, the lights. It's like to, as long as I get the the the, sh, the structure of it, the shell of it, um, I could decide further into the process exactly how much detail I want to include. Um, and exactly where the lighting is going to be here and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but I think it's, it's definitely a check. Uh, that will be that cut car. Um, let's see, how do I, okay, now there's the two cup cars, all right, and they're at different places. Uh, this one will actually, you know, it looks, both cup cars look like they're almost running parallel but this one the one on the right of the piece will be slightly raised in the front and lower in the back which means we're going to see more of this than the rest of the car. Uh, so it's not exactly right, but it's close. Because 
this one. This car. Is almost over the hill and it's like the front is being weighed down. So Almost like the points, perspective points. No more like that. But we don't we see it. It's kind of almost like it's going up over a hill and shifting this way a little. Even more to the side. Since the driver is the one shooting, <laughs> he has total control. Um, So that means what? The tires, the tire is almost facing us, and maybe this one is with the car, and I don't exactly see the front. Let me see it side do my police sound His head and his left arm. It's almost like maybe one bullet trajectory like this, like passing in front of her. Um, so we'll be seeing possibly down the barrel of the gun. And him looking through there. The other cop looking on. But might not see that much of them. So I'm thinking that's how it's going to go. Closer. Getting closer. Get 
Yeah, I mean, this is. Oh, I'm yawning already. Okay, wake up, Peter. Um, fifteen. I'll make it a lot busier once the basics are laid down. You know, I could even include Yeah, what do you think about this? Um where am I? Okay. Uh like that's the horror rising line kind of sorta. But I could have a wall. It's kind of a funky perspective, but wall coming up behind the cop car. So it would make sense. Yeah, I like that. There, the wheel is like turning towards us almost. But this one, flush with the car. like this. This car swerves the back tire because it's shooting 
this that way. Uh, as much detail as I can include in his face and his arm. Like I said, it's almost like shooting, shooting directly at us. If Victoria is here, have that like above her, and the other cop car is here, have his shot going behind her, but almost like it's being shut up as well. Like low to high. Like as if she's you know, like there in this area and she's in this area. Almost like this this is a higher I do that um so he's shooting, and this is a trail above her, and he's shooting, and this is as if it's behind her, like back or, or whatever winds up being there. Um, or something to that effect. Um, Now, dynamics of the bike, that's uh, going to be a bitch. Uh, but, yeah, let me just fudge this in. Um, so, it's more like this is higher up in the front, although this is closer, so the front of the car is bigger than the back of the car. This wheel is turned towards us, but that's going parallel with the car. All things to keep in mind. And this is as if it's Kind of straight as, but at an angle. See all all, all this like object perspective, um, and and you know like how things travel and. Uh, I don't even know what <laughs> uh, is. I'm sure. Let's see. I have to decide. Okay. Are we seeing it more? Seeing the bottom. 
waste of time. Okay, no updates, please. I'm getting an update. Cannot update. That would be bad. All sorts of updates on Facebook. Okay. Not really pertaining to me. Okay. I need to nail this a little bit better. Um, Oh, so I'm <laughs> saying like all of this perspective and the object perspective and, and um, that should be really short. Okay. It's definitely challenging. Uh, and, 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 it's, and it's why I um, Why people do fantasy paintings. <laughs> All right, that's that. It's kind of. That would be the trail of that. That would be the trail of that car. trail of the motorcycle um be an arm out here firing this bullet behind victoria <sighs> i'm doing a, a lot of things that i love the like um, figuring all this stuff out. I'm sure, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> people do it directly on the page. I'm, like, doing a hundred different drawings. Um, you know, I'm sure. You know, three years I'm uh, Okay, so she is the biggest challenge. Got her to figure out. So I'll do on a new piece of paper. Yeah, you know, this is an eight hour challenge. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get worked out of this cover. 
I have confidence it will be uh, a good part more. But, um, yeah. I have to figure out the little details first. All right, so this might look pretty decent. Come on, come on, come on. I need to scope something out. I'm sorry this isn't more exciting for anybody who is bored out of their minds, but uh, I think I'm like, you know, this this might be a little interesting <laughs> if you listen to it later. Um, all right. I need... No, no, no. Click, 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 click. Let's see you bigger. All right. All right. Okay. Shrink that and bring you down there. Times like this, I, well, I wish I had. Um, uh, two monitors. <laughs> All right. Uh, the bike. Let's assume. Never assume. Is that kind of right? Um, probably shouldn't do it that big. Um, all right, let's just do it small. Let's see, that's the front. Might have to. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm definitely gonna make up my own bike. Uh, sort of getting a handle on. Look like this. I should do it more on camera. I need to push that to the side. Okay. So, 
we'll see it more from this side. So it will be pretty much like that. Like, see the back tire. You see this. I think on this side it can be thinner. And this side, let's see. Let me see this side. Okay. Here's the wheel. like that, put them in there. Can't think of it in shapes. Let's see, it's a decent bike. The question is, is that a decent drawing? Um, it's much better than the cover I did on the cover. But is that accurate? So we'll have her upper body. I haven't drawn this thing, <laughs> something that's difficult in a long time. I don't see much of her face. comes out and uh, some strands of hair, hair, hair. Um,
All right, I'm sorry, I'm not talking. Um, so her back is out a little. Her center of gravity is. Uh, I'm gonna really. Let's see, the seat is below. So. It's almost like we won't see her other leg. Okay. And that windshield. Will be there. Kind of. That stuff, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is not going to be one of those, look at every detail of that bike and how amazing it all works perfectly. Um, <laughs> behind her butt is a shelf behind, and tires there and yeah really won't uh, see that much of her yeah okay all right so Happy enough. We're figured out enough detail in regards to basically how the bike looks, uh, direction wise, and what you call it. Yeah, and how she fits atop it, and it should look good. In front of the cop cars, and I'll throw, strew some garbage around, and garbage pail. Next, I'm going to need, I don't need reference, but I'm going to check. That's not it. these notifications um, it's past eight o'clock I'm really considering taking another five um, but I'm gonna push forward I uh, don't know where Lisa is and she's gonna be cooking dinner and unfortunately because you know we got money the other night had to run around a couple Take care of some stuff. Had to run around. She had to run around all day today. Take care of stuff. Um, uh, yeah. This. <laughs> There's stuff in the house. Nothing great. All right. I just want to go 
open the door. Stuff you find. That's kind of cool. Want some uh, decent pose for her. So, I think I found something. So I want some sort of decent pose for her. Um, like I mentioned, something that would give us a good image of her. the character just a little bit so that's now what regardless of whether food arrives I think this break will be a rough bathroom break coming up. Um, so, yeah, so. So it's sort of like I don't have a full shot, but uh, just go off what I know. All right, so. This is like
Mm. Alright, I'm giving it too much flavor. Um, I'm stop talking. Essentially, trying to um, against the cover so far, loose pencils, um, penciler and anchor, just describing this if there are people watching. Um, coming up with a, a decent pose for her here. I think I like this. Show uh, tweak it a bit, but um, let's see. Her little defensive little, I don't know. I mean, I, I can make it where I want it to be. Um, I just think it's a cool pose. Are sort of clenched. I could I could change any details about this. I don't like. Um, let's see. All right. First of all, jeans, and they go down. Black shirt. Uh, longer legs. Leave it. Something I have to check. Reference. All right. Where are you? Where are you? Screen it. Oh, oh, 
that goes to the right place. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Oh, the artist on Victoria Black is Vincent Rodriguez. It appears. Hmm. Yeah, page one of Victoria Black, amazing. <laughs> All right, now I'm supposed to do a cover for this. All right, here goes my second guessing my own abilities. At concourse. Um. I'm sorry. Light flare. Lens flare. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking. You know, I'd give her a gray shirt, but, you know, I'm putting too much of my own flair <laughs> into it. I keep it very, very basic. I mean, it's mostly uh, look like her working out. I just, you know... I don't want to do a cover where she's mostly not seen. So. is awesome.
Yeah, so something like that. Can you see that? All right. Not too many screens going. But. All right. Um, so I think I'll. Hmm. Well, okay. The, this is this is unusual for me, but uh, I think this is uh, how I'm going to work this piece. Is I'm going to lay down some black and build on it, um, which that's not unusual, but I'm going to go back in and throw in some white afterwards um, and then mess about on top of that. Now, the white is, is usually like um, something I, I never add unless it stars. I think um, by adding that extra level um, like specifically like I'm guessing like for the, the bullets flying, um, I don't want to have to like, you know, pencil her, her t entire figure in and figure out the exact trajectory um, before inking. <laughs> you know, I'll just do that after. Uh, it'll save me time. So I'm going to start with her figure on the on the left go in erase that sort of do this kind of figure here uh, maybe ink in the um, the skeleton of that and then erase do that car then do her then do that car and and start building and messing about yeah, until you know maybe maybe I'll just keep the skeleton of everything below uh, really go in then and, and uh, work out the uh, logo a lot more uh, we'll see um, you know right now it's 830 so three and a half hours I don't know how much I'm going to complete of this, but I've, I've made serious progress. Um, I, could, I, I should at least be able to have the skeleton of this cover done, which means the, the bear, I would think, because, you know, even though I, I sort of mapped everything out <laughs> on sketches, I have to put it all together on the page now. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to take five now. Um, I'm really starving. Got to go to the bathroom. Um, but I'll be back. Please don't leave. Um, leave me, uh, you know, the. Comments are streaming live on on the YouTube page. Um, hey, Jay's watching. Hey, Jay. Thanks. And yeah, progress is being made. I'm gonna take a short break. I shall return. Where am I? Okay, see you soon. Don't leave.
and I return. All right. So, <laughs> thanks for everybody who's hanging out. Um, Lisa's still not around. I'm going to do a head count on our critters. Uh, everybody seems to be in the living room right now. Kitty cats. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining. I'm doing an impossible challenge for myself today. Uh, working on a cover. Uh, all right, let me get focused. Do, do, do. I'm trying to be entertaining, folks. It's a long process, I know. And it's <laughs> it, it's kind of why uh, YouTube artists cut things down to a uh, half hour. All right. So I got a little extra room. All right. I think what I'll do. A guideline. So I'm giving a semi race. Um, use more of the space. And get the character. <laughs> Page Pants, colors, etc. in ten hours. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I <laughs> I don't normally um, do that from start to finish. Let's see. All right. I wish it got the whole thing on screen, but okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't normally start a piece, finish a piece within one day. Um, I don't think I'm gonna. Complete this, you know, even just pencils and inks in eight hours. Uh, but I'm giving it my best shot. Of course, I'm like taking breaks. Thinking, thinking, let's see. I totally appreciate um, 
anyone who's sticking with me and watching this, listening along. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like better at inking than I am at penciling. Which you could probably <laughs> maybe tell. Uh, but it's fun. Man, I've been drawing all my life, but I, I haven't really given uh, penciling like serious doing serious work until it seems like just recently but you'll see yeah. uh, wait. finish result will hopefully speak for itself Um, yeah, later, kind of waiting for uh, my girl to get home. Um, so, cook us, cook us up something, or maybe show up with something for dinner. Um, I'm going to try to make it a short break. Uh, like I've been taking, but um, let's see how that goes. <laughs> oh no! Hold on a second. <laughs> Thor, go away. Cat's trying to get in studio. That would not be good. Get nothing done with that in here. So, so yeah, once once Lisa gets in here, get some dinner and in my stomach, um, I may consider having people uh, drop in after that. Yeah. 
anybody's Jay or Kevin or Tristan um, Times it now. Uh, and I maybe around ten. I have no idea who Lisa is. I start messaging her. She probably involved me in the conversation and take me away from doing this. So. Oh, stumpy, stumpy. Doing. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you've been watching, uh, if you're watching this later. Um, Put a lot of work and thought into you know exactly how things are going to lay out and the logic behind them. Um, I do, you know, I do a lot of what I've done, never so intensely. <laughs> um, you know, I think. A major part of that is because this is going to be a cover. And I really want to really do a good job actually have logic to what I'm doing. Oh, I hear Lisa. Yeah, probably around 10, I'll start inviting people. Um, I don't want to do a full hangout, <clears throat> so I want to keep focused. Uh, but maybe one on one, if anybody is uh, interested at that. Best way is message me on Facebook or, or just. Do it in the comments on YouTube, and I'll see it when the time comes. Okay, so.
<laughs> awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link uh, after I eat. Uh, so Kevin Cross said he would join. So I'm happy in the know. Maybe ink an outline of it. Okay, well, it looks like uh, my dinner has arrived and is ready. So it's 9.06. Uh, I'll try just to take 15 minutes. Um, so I'll be back 9.20ish. I'll be, uh, yeah, dribbling down some ink, at least for the full figure, uh, and taking it from there. Uh, so I hope uh, if you take a break that you'll be back. Uh, then we'll have a uh, guest arrive. <laughs> okay. See you soon. I hope you enjoy it, as always.
And I'm back. I still got some viewers. All right, just checking messages for a second. Uh, why is it always the case when I'm doing hangouts that I get work? Uh, which is good. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, He's in the other room. <clears throat> Too many breaks already. <laughs> Too much going on. Uh, thus, the challenge. All right. I think I'll... Ink her a little... Uh, my, my studio is officially a mess at the moment. <laughs> but that's cool. Because I'm a real artist now. I'm just too OCD. Alright, so... To ink and yeah, Kevin, if you're ready to come in, yeah. throw that link your way. <laughs> Kevin is a YouTube icon. Sent Kevin Cross two invites. <laughs> One should work. The 
this way. I won't be alone anymore. And more people are welcome. Uh, I think I'll just do one at a time. So somebody else can talk while I figure out what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just going to do the framework kind of, like I said, I'm going to go with white later. But it almost doesn't have to be perfect in any sense of around like mad. Maybe looking at it and going, ah, that's quite messy. Trust me, this is all going to tighten up in the end. Okay, cool. <laughs> that works. Kevin says 10 minutes. Cooking with gas. So, what else can I talk about before Kevin gets here? Um, 
Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of ways to approach building an image, making it work. Um, like I said, this is a little more intensive than, than I normally do. Um, by all means, you know, I'm still in many ways mostly an anchor. But I've been drawing a lot more, pick up a lot more, you know, in just the last six months. Building an image. Hey. Hey, dude. Hey, Kevin. How's it going? It's going well. Awesome. I survived so long. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's one of my timers. I don't know if you can hear that. So I have this job. I have to do a page, every page, and like, with my like regular weekly schedule, I have to do a page in ten hours, from beginning to end. So is that what you mapped it out to be? Uh, yeah, because they need three pages from me a week, and I basically have thirty hours to do it. Right. Yeah. So I have this this app that's got these timers. You can set like multiple timers, and so I set a time for penciling, inking, and coloring. Right. And, uh, you know, if I don't, I mean, if the thing's about to go off and I'm not quite done, then I just scribble in whatever needs to be done and that's it. <laughs> so, a lot of times when I color after I flat, I try to color, like, the most important stuff first. You know, and then whatever's left, like, little elements, like maybe an ashtray on a table or something like that. That's just flat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there right. hasn't been going. Oh, man, it's brutal. Because yeah. what ends up happening is that, like, I actually did one page in six hours. And then the Jeez. next page was 12 hours. You know, and then <laughs> life stuff comes up. And, like, it basically have no social life or anything right now. And so, uh... Oops. And then, uh, yeah, and then, you know, just life stuff. Unforeseen things, like the day I'm supposed to work 10 hours and all of a sudden I have to go to a computer store that's half an hour away from my house and, you know, stupid stuff like that. Like, for example, yesterday I was supposed to work and I drove to three stores and ended up being, like, 45 minutes drive away from my house where I found this ink cartridge I needed. Um, you know, and that's round trip after going to two other stores, and so then I get behind, so I end up like watching my daughter, and then I've got like you know two to four hours the nights my wife works, so it, it it's, still ends up being more than thirty hours a week, but so I haven't done anything for myself at all, no videos, nothing, just this comic. Yeah, I know. I noticed you've been mostly quiet. You know, you post stuff on Facebook, but that takes a second. Yeah, but I've just been doing that. What is it? That five day and you know, was it three pieces of art, old art in five days or something? On Instagram, yeah, I've been doing yeah. like a daily sketch. But they're like ten minutes at the most, most of the time. <laughs> but I'm gonna start doing videos again. You want to see something? Sure. Let me see if I can get my pants down real quick. <laughs> Snapchat, right? Um, <laughs> how do I find the icon to share the my screen? It should be on the left. Uh, there we go. A, okay. What screen do I screen need? Box. This one. The right one? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's the right one. That's awesome. Great. <laughs> Let me find. Uh, you're really good. Yeah, you like that? I've been working on that real hard all day. Oh, here it is. 
I don't know if the sound from my screen is going to capture as well. Do you know if that happens? Uh, I don't know. It's it, it's not as important as the visual. Okay. Here's what I got in store, Peter, if it'll load. I can hear it. <laughs> awesome. It's you heard it here up. first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to try to start that this week. So, I need to... Really? Yeah, I need to learn how to get up earlier and stuff. And for sure, this time it's going to be like 30 minutes only. I mean, it was 30 minutes before most of the time, but, you know, I got to do a little extra sometimes. But now right. Um, so is that you working on Monkey Mod, or, or are you... You're working on the comic you're working on now. Oh, uh, Monkey Mod. Because I feel uh, like you're cheating. Okay. This, this comic is client work. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure the publisher's not watching or listening, but I don't care about it as much as I care about Monkey Mod. <laughs> I understand that. You're going to... So you have limited time now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. And I you, mean, not weird. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks because I had limited time before, but um, you know, it, it's just like I got so tired of. Well, I mean, you see my other videos. It's just me talking about how much I hate working for clients now. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just feeling pretty through with the business, unless it's uh, you know doing what Jeff does, kind of making my own way kind of thing. Right. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to talk about it more in the first video about, because my last video I was all gung-ho about a bunch of stuff for, for this year, you know, my kind of, I guess, end of the year video. Right. And things kind of change real fast. And so now if I don't, um, if I don't make myself do another 100 days of making comics, then, you know, all the progress I made with make the first making comics and, uh, like, you know, any momentum that I had, which is, feels like it's kind of waning because I haven't been able to work on it at all, you know, it, it's just going to be gone and I won't be able to start working on Monkey Mind until November, which I had originally right. thought was going to be like June, which felt like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but right now it doesn't, you know? Because, like, November, that's, like, almost a whole year away. Yeah, yeah, it's... So I was just like, screw this, i got to make something happen. You know, and then I heard some... Usually when people, you know, everyone's got those friends on Facebook that always post, like, real cheesy, inspirational, like, hang in there kind of stuff. <laughs> and usually I'm like, oh, God, this person's posting stupid shit again. Um, but I saw something someone posted that kind of resonated, even though I felt like it was still a little cheesy. But it was like, um, uh, there will never be enough time unless you make it. And I was like, yeah, that sounds real cheesy, but damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, right now, you know, I uh, I stay awake until my eyes are bleeding, and then uh, I wake up too early when my daughter wakes up, and uh, you know, so I'm gonna try to get on a schedule where I'm like eventually getting up at. Uh, like 6 a.m. or something. Something absurd. 
Hmm. So that's that's a question. Question. It's going to be hard for me, though, man, because I'm, like, not in bed until 2, usually, at the earliest. Yeah. And then, you know, after work, I can't go right to sleep, so I watch, like, a movie or something <laughs> on my phone on Netflix or something like that. Or catch up on... Isn't that the case? Yeah. <laughs> catch up on whatever TV shows I'm watching on Hulu. But, wow, man. That's, that's awesome, though. I so, give you credit. I was going to try to start last week, but got a little bit behind on this graphic novel, so... Um, you know, and I have an excuse like that this week, too, but I'll probably have an excuse like that next week also, so I might as well just do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's working against your former self, which is, <laughs> you know, the key. Yeah. You know, it's like... I mean, part of doing this tonight, which is, like, in one way, it's insane. It's like, you know, why am I doing eight hours on this cover? You know, I, I got this and other deadlines, and um, but I, I was like, well, you know, it scares me the idea of, of doing it, so I'm gonna do it. Here you go. And uh, it's like. I'm just going to do it until it gets done. You know, it's probably not going to get done in this eight-hour time frame, but um, at least a good part will get started. And yeah. I'll be able to, you know, de-stress about this at the moment and get back on my other deadline. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I, I get, like, comic ink and work coming my way now. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing, man. That's great. Yeah, but we need the money. <laughs> so yeah, I wish I they were bringing it up so I could outsource this, some of this to you. <laughs> <laughs> this job pays so shitty. Yeah, well, you know, my That's my rate isn't, isn't what it should be either. But um, this will work until something better. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking of doing, like you, doing it again. But you know, once I, uh, I don't know what, what did I want to focus on? I forget now. I don't know. Probably, probably in the summer. I was thinking of doing it. Yeah. See, I was thinking that. Uh. In the summer, I was going to do 100 days again, but it was going to be um, like a full-time job where I just work on that, you know, because, I mean, this pays, this job doesn't pay well. I mean, you know, somebody working at McDonald's probably makes more than I do right now. But, uh, right. you know, there's still going to be enough money where I could take off you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to go back to working for clients anyway. But, um, but yeah, so there's going to be kind of like a, you know, a little nest egg for that. And my wife's on board with it, luckily. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I was going to wait till then. But then, I don't know, everything changed. There's a big, January sucked, I went into 2015 so positive, and then just, oh, January was a bag of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, mean, so I guess, you know, you know, I'll just do it now. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's great, that's, you know, well, that's... What you did the first time around, this is going to do doubly that. That's inspiration to all. 
It's like, get her off your ass. No matter what you're doing, you can do it. Still do it. <laughs> right. Well, it's been cool, too. Like, you know, I've been here watching you and Jeff on the Hangouts and or in Mike, too. But, uh, you know, it seems like 100 Days of Comics has come up recently. Over the on that right. show, you know, and and then uh, that new guy, I guess he's not new at comics, but he's new to me. Started to do it, and uh, yeah, I was like, oh, Jazzbot's the only one still holding the flame, you know, <laughs> torch. And uh, I was like, oh man, I don't want this to die. <laughs> well, um. Is is uh, Emmy introducing Emmy? Oh yes, yeah. Um, I always forget about her because she stopped for a long time. Well, yeah, she's she's not doing it the prescribed way. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a prescribed way. There was just <laughs> when I started, it was like this is how I'm doing it. Right. Because I didn't think anyone was going to do it. You know. But, yeah, I can imagine. You had no clue <laughs> what would happen. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, all right, talking to an empty room, <laughs> talking to myself. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she, she doesn't – she uh, did, a like, three a little while back. I, I actually have to go back and watch them. Um and then she's back to, you know, she's got a full schedule. Um, and she does the 100 days as doing retouches or redoing pages, uh, updating pages, whatever. But um, so she's here and there. But there's JFM. Do you know Jeff? No, no yeah, that's the guy who just started doing them, right? Yeah, he does uh, a comic called Jeff and Taylor. Yeah, no, I just, um, I watched that first one because you posted it, otherwise I wouldn't yeah. know it was there. But he plans to do 60 pages in 100 days, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately I'll probably do about that much too, but it won't be on my own thing. But, so, kudos to him for <laughs> doing it on his own project. Yeah. You know, it's funny, like, I'm excited that, uh, you know, someone else, you know, there's another person doing it. But on the other hand, I'm still, like, kind of behind on, because, you know, how it kind of became, like, like a community thing, right? Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, shit, you know, I, I, I didn't, I'm glad for that, but now i got to watch everyone's videos. Not that I'm complaining about that, but it's just like the time, that, you know. But so I'm starting to catch up with people now because of uh, this work schedule that I've got. So it gives me a lot, I mean, of, a lot of stuff to listen to and stuff when I'm drawing, so it's cool. Yeah, pace and, you know, um, that's... Good thing it's only a hundred days. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually you'll catch up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even listen to podcasts anymore. I've been trying to. <laughs> I just uh, I just watch YouTube, or have it, or listen to YouTube, and. Glance up on occasion. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like you know once you become a YouTuber, it's kind of hard to keep track with everybody on YouTube and what they're up to and posting your videos and and you know being a part of the community. Um, yeah, and then regular podcasts fall by the wayside. Yeah, it just. I don't know. There's not much that I've found lately in podcasting that really interests me. And eat it, you know, these days. Because, like, even, like, the comic ones, I feel like, 
you know, being on doing Big Illustration Party Time and being on Art and Story, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> I, don't feel, yeah. you know, I don't know. I guess it sounds egotistical. Well, I don't mean it, don't mean it that way. I'm just like, oh, I don't. I don't want to hear about it anymore. <laughs> it's only so much like you can verbalize. Yeah, you know, YouTube is a show and tell. Right. <laughs> Which, I mean, I like YouTube much better, you know, and I kind of wish, in a way, I mean, I, I'm glad for all the podcasting stuff I did, you know, because made friends through it and everything. But same with YouTube, you know, it seems like making friends through YouTube and, you know, meeting new artists, you know, maybe not in person, but online at least, and then, uh, you know, it's... The stuff we do is a visual medium, so it makes more sense for it to be on YouTube than in audio. Yeah. Yeah. So I was hoping to finish this inking so I could start screen sharing stuff because I got a color next, but that's what it looks like, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Finished. Next. Yeah, phoning it in. <laughs> I know. So Victoria, Victoria Black, is that what that says? Yeah. Um. That's. So, yeah. <clears throat> I kind of like, um, <clears throat> the guy showed me a cover, and it had a very uh, basic, generic kind of logo, uh -huh. and I was like, do you want me to do a logo for it? He's like, yeah, have fun. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, you were talking about that before on another yeah. day. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I got to tighten it up, but... Essentially, that's what it looks like, and then this is like speed line, and that's simplified version of her on the motorcycle. Just thought it would be different. Um, and then I figured I'll do a full figure because you don't really see that much of her, and she's in a helmet, which I didn't really draw there. Uh, on the bike and all in black clothing and gloves and so you're not gonna <laughs> and it's at night and, and you know everything else is black <laughs> yeah there's some cheats I've done for this comic you know the timer's about to go off and I'm like alright filling that in black <laughs> oh it's at night time <laughs> I just color it all moody yeah throw in some uh Flares. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, I don't pencil enough. You know, I, I, I sketch a lot. Um, there's a piece I did uh, on two of the episodes I was on with on Just Show, um, and. Actually, in one sitting, I just started a drawing, uh, started inking it, uh, then I had to step away. But I, I finished most of it. <laughs> then, then in like the next episode, I just finished inking the rest of it, and I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I rarely do that, though. I rarely like, sit from beginning to end on anything. Um, that to me is the biggest challenge. I think we might have spoke about that sort of thing at one point. Um, it's just I like the 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 space to sort of feel it out if it needs an extra something somewhere. You know. Yeah. It's um, I 
working on this comic, like, for this publisher with the deadline that they want, and, or, you know, and the time I have and everything. And I have to, like, I don't know how well anyone's going to see this. Let me see. Is that coming in clear at all? Uh, I can see it, yeah. Um, I'm penciling so fast and so loose. And then I'm inking, like, as fast as I can to the point where, like, things I would brush, I'm just using microns and stuff. Right. Um, so it's, like, like what you're talking about, like, with this comic, I can't do that. You know, I can't... yeah. You know, play with stuff until I, I feel like it's right. It's just like, <laughs> um, well, there it is. <laughs> you know, oh, that hand gesture sucked. Oh well. Yeah. Hope they don't catch it. Um. So when I, so I'm look also looking forward to do doing monkey mod so that you know, even though it's three minutes a day, I'm gonna do do it more like. You know, with love. <laughs> um, Cause I feel like, well, I don't feel like it. I know it. I'm. I can't give them my best work. Yeah, there's no way. And you know, it's, it's yeah. So. Like I said in a video before, I kind of took this job hoping that it would put some eyes on Monkey Mod, but I don't know. Monkey Mod's going to look so much better. Like, so much better. So, um, I don't know if anyone who's going to read this book is going to ever go over there. Because they're going to be like two different animals, you know? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Like, this is one of those jobs, like, um, where if something doesn't look right in pencils, then I try to, you know, like, screw it, all right, I'll fix it in inks. You know, if that whatever problem was there doesn't fix in inks, then I mask it in color. You know, it's like... Um, one thing, I mean... I guess that I wanted out of it was that uh, it would make me faster, right? Which is, which is working, but you know the the skill that I feel I have doesn't match the speed I have to do. Does that, if that makes sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like I draw a lot better than what I'm able to do. So, I don't know. So I'm hoping that after, you know, got over 100 more pages left, so I'm hoping that they start to, to mesh, and then when I start working on Monkey Mod full-time, it'll, you know, be kick-ass plus fast. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're changing your, your method. Um, and, it, you know, I mean, there's, there's plenty of artists who are, like, you know, more fine artists who eventually get into the rhythm of, you know, hey, I'm working in comics, I gotta draw, like, you know, comics are drawn. <laughs> uh, um, you know, if you look at names, you know, from when we were growing up, like John Byrne or George Perez or Walt Simonson, um, they have comics that you could tell they spent a month and a half on. Then it, they have books out that it looks like it was done in three weeks. Yeah. And you gotta kind of be able to do both. Yeah. Well. The cool thing is, is that um, this does not, you know, 
it's not up to those guys' skill level or anything, but uh, I I did I've done twenty two pages in January, so that is awesome. Yeah, hasn't been fun, but. You live to tell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start coloring this thing. <laughs> cool. Oh, I, I wanted to ask you something, and this is like with the, um, uh, the D100's um, Tumblr. Oh, yeah. I got Go ahead. I, have um, yeah. I was wondering if you could share the responsibility of that. Yeah, you want to help? Sure. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I think I can do that. I mean, I know I can. Um, I think I... Let me look at it right now real quick. Because, yeah, I know, like, Gasbot sent me some stuff, and I just, like... I haven't been able to post his link, but part of my idea for it now is because a lot of people were on there. And what is it? Six of us finished. I think I think so. I think I just want to make it for the people who finish. The the Hall of Famers. <laughs> yeah, like you have to finish the hundred days first. That makes sense. Um, just because, you know, I mean, if, if someone comes on and does it for like two days and then they get all the promo for whatever else to do, and I mean, that's cool and all, but they didn't go, you know, they didn't run the gauntlet, you know? So in a way, I yeah. feel like it's unfair to everyone who did finish. Yeah, like, I don't think, um, uh... Jonathan Rector ever made that list, but uh, no, you know, he's, he's a guy that, that put seven <laughs> days and then had to go off do whatever. Um, and you know we love him, but yeah, he only, he only did three days. <laughs> yeah, and then his buddy did one, and you know, yeah, good artist, but yeah, you know, one day. I mean, he's not he didn't even send anything in to be on the list, so. But, yeah. you know, some people got to, like, 20-something days, and um, Marshall got far. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marshall was talking about possibly jumping back on so he could finish. I think he should. Let's see. Because I, I think, think he should. Didn't he have, like, a, just a <laughs> month to go or something? Um, 40, give or take, uh, depending on who's counting. You know, so just, just over a month, I don't know, something like that. Sorry, my scanner's loud. I don't know if you can hear that. Very low. So I guess I can start... Screen share in here. Let me see. I'm going to open up another page that I'm going to sample colors from. Mm -hmm. A couple of them. So, um, Jeff said earlier today that he'd probably make it in later. Cool. So, it's like 10 o'clock for you? Right now? Yeah, for this hangout. What's Colorado? Is that mountain time? That's mountain time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's only 8 for him. Let's see. Yeah, it's uh it's early for me, so <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. Seven. Um 
If he if he'd make it, he'd probably show up an hour and a half from now. That's cool. What else do I need for this? Oh man, yeah, I gotta fix this guy's nose. I inked it all weird. So I was doing it so fast and I gave him a big dopey profile. Colors off that. So the way I've been doing these pages, also, is uh, yeah. This is page nineteen. I've been uh, uh, lettering things first, so that I don't have to ink <laughs> or color. <laughs> you know, because I was. At first, when I first started doing this, I was doing full pages and then um, lettering last so that just in case they could move the lettering around or um, uh, this is a European publisher, so I'm pretty sure they're going to republish it in a few different languages. You know, so they could, right. you know, redo that and stuff like that. And Yeah, and then the time that I had, the time they wanted me to do things in, the time, you know, just came down to time, so I was like, screw it. <laughs> you can just white out the word balloons and put in, you know, the other languages. Yeah. I'm sure they just make a larger balloons if they need them or whatever. Yeah. Squeeze them in. <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing like cheats too, like if there's like a similar pose that I have to do, I'll grab one from another page right. <laughs> and uh, just kind of redo it a little bit. <laughs> that works. There you go. And I was filling in blacks, now I wait until the computer stage to fill in blacks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it still looks like your work, but yeah, there's it it a big difference between... Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> like... Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Understandable. That looks good enough. Oops. What else is going on? I heard about the cats. And there's all sorts of trauma going on around here. Um yeah, we have to we have four cats and because of the community we live in, um, at least a third have animals, and everybody got busted this past inspection. Because um, you have to you have to pay a fee for each animal you have. So we're gonna get rid of three because we could only afford one at that point. Um, right. And well, I mean, you know, in in some way, it's it's for the better. 
because you know lately the last month it seems like every day I'm fighting to get into my studio every day I'm fighting to keep them out of my studio if they're in my studio and you know I'm trying to work then they, you know the chaos so it's a lot of cats dude places <laughs> well yeah I mean but like the the apartment's too small for you know us and them and <laughs> right I mean it's it's a house but it's an apartment whatever um is it like a fourplex or a duplex or something like that? It's it's like a string of homes all like row houses or something together. Yeah. And uh, you know, so we'll save on all, all the money we put to to all of them. You know. In the long run, it will do us good, but we'll have to put out the 350 for the one cat um, out of our bank that doesn't have that at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but you're an artist sucks <laughs> <laughs> for the for money. <laughs> yeah, and on on top of that. Um, we might have to get one of our car tires replaced. Something funky is going on with. We think it's the battery, though it could be the engine. Um, and we gotta have our car. Can't do anything around it, mostly. Right. Um. What else? <laughs> I don't know. I got a ton of work, and money will be coming in. Uh, I'm feeling a little rusty as just an anchor, uh -huh. but it will it will come back to me, you know. Yeah, dude, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. So, but so far so good, and you know, just more things are popping up. I mean, I I got. Somebody messaged me during this hangout. It's funny. It's like when I was on Jeff's show, I got like two work messages. You know, it's like, hey, you want to work on this? Sure. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how that works. <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, you know, uh, my daughter's going to be three this month, so. It was about three years ago, and uh, I'd just gotten a new agent about three months prior, and, you know, they were telling me that, uh, you know, it was going to take about three months to get things going, and, uh, you know, I was still kind of working on, like, house accounts and stuff like that, but they were kind of slowing down, and I was getting a little nervous having a kid pop up, and, I, you know, all of a sudden I have... Uh, no work and my daughters do and you know we live in a country where uh, you know <laughs> there's not good services for maternity leave if, if your job pays luckily um, my wife's job did help out a bit but I was super nervous I went from no clients to six within the matter of a week and a half <laughs> And uh, then all of a sudden it was too much. <laughs> I was like, fuck. And that's how it happens. And then all of a sudden I finish six and I start freaking out and, you know, dumps with another batch. And you can never just have, like, a comfortable, like, one or two and then the next week another one or two, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's either freak out or, like, freak out because you need work or freak out because... Too much. Well, you know, I mean, now I got too much and, and little pay. I hope I can turn that around and get a little work and a lot of pay. Right. So, you know, I, I expect like six months down the line, things are going to be much better, but it's going to be hell to get there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, Sofer. We got we got viewers. You got viewers. I don't see the chat anymore. Oh, it's. Okay. Uh, Put it into the Facebook link. Thing in my bottom. Oh, actually, it's it's on the page. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just open up the uh, uh, YouTube page. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The links are in the... Well, maybe you don't see them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. What am I doing here? Uh, that's fine. All right. Where's my... So I made all these little sketches to, to get all my elements correct. <laughs> I don't think anybody else works like me. Um, the way I've been doing it, I don't know if this will help you at all, but um, you know, maybe is I do all my roughs now digitally, mostly, like the pencils I showed. I did the roughs. Or, yeah, just like really fast in one pass digitally and then, you know, resize elements if I need to or move stuff around. I guess it's kind of cheating, but... Well, I don't have a... Um, I actually do that. I'll, I would do them digitally, but um, all I has a, have is a mouse and... Oh. Uh, you don't have a, like a, a cool tablet? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I need, like, all new equipment. Um, oh, that's another thing. Uh, oh, your computer? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, well, I had to get a new monitor not too long ago. Well, I used new monitor. Um, but I'm going to have to update my operating system because uh, the uh, updates are no longer valid. <laughs> I'm still using XP. <laughs> I don't really know what that means because I work on a Mac. That's a Windows thing. Oh, well, <laughs> Windows XP uh, has been around since before 2000. <laughs> before 2000. Um, I don't know. A long, long, long time. <laughs> I'm sure you. I'm sure I could wiki it and find it. <laughs> you might set up the Y2K bug, and that's why you meant... A long time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, it's going to crash. Yeah, that's why That's why your monitor blew up. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know what the hell happened with that. Usually, like, monitors slowly die, and it takes, like, months, even a year or two. But it just, it just like... Fused overnight or something, so it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that's yeah. <laughs> computer problems and car problems are the worst. Yeah, got a little both going on. <laughs> Keep it entertaining. So I'm drawing the uh, pages just a little bit bigger. So right now I'm just, I should just do it at size from now on, <laughs> just to cut out this one more step. That's like the cover I'm doing is at size. Monkey Mud's going to have a lot more love. I'm actually going to do, you know, 11 by 17 pages and all that stuff. <clears throat> this is just a little bit bigger than size, and then, you know, I don't know if it's making that much of a difference. I'm going to re 
resize and drop back in this thing. I don't know. Oops. It's weird, like, working on these pages, like, having to do a page in 10 hours. I get to a certain point that I start, it starts getting kind of slow. You know, because I'm just getting kind of burnt. And so far, this book has just yeah. been talking to kids. It's super duper exciting. <laughs> Well, you know, this is this is your trial by fire. Consider, you know, at the very least, consider it a challenge for that sake. And, yeah. You know, I'm tired of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, shortly you'll be entering one again. Uh, yep. <laughs> I like challenges that are um, of my own design. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Because then you can change the rules. Yep. <laughs> I hear you. So are you, um, like you made uh, this hangout, are you able at all to maybe make one of Jeff's hangouts? Um, he does it you're super hard. early in the morning, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's earlier your time. Um, what is it, 7, I guess, your time? It would start, and it goes 2 hours? Yeah, 7 my time right now is, that's asking a lot of me. yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, because I mean, like I said, you know, right now, if if I'm in bed, it's like two at the earliest, and then I can't just shut <laughs> off, you know, until like three, sometimes four. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, I'm gonna try to uh, change my schedule around so that. Uh, I am waking up early, before, like a few hours before my family does. Right. So at that point, I will be able to. But I gotta <laughs> make a lifestyle change first. <laughs> yep. Understand. I'd like to. Yeah, even if it's like one episode or whatever. <clears throat> it's like his new system of doing his show. Yeah, I like it. Sometimes I, I kind of miss when he would just like <laughs> get grumpy about something by himself. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is, yeah, it is pretty entertaining. Um, especially since, uh, you know, Mike seems like a really cool guy, but definitely way younger. So some of the stuff, <laughs> like pop culture references or something like that, I'm like, how do you not know that? I'm like, oh, you're yeah, probably like 20 years younger than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Everything can be easily explained. He just doesn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. She's younger. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, you know, on one hand, I, sometimes I'm watching and I'm like, man, you know, I knew about stuff my parents were into, you know, when they were kids, but, you know, then you forget, you know, I grew up in a time when, you know, well, both of us, when we had, what, you know, the three major networks and then UHF and VHF and that was it. You know, we have five channels, so um, <laughs> we were seeing all the reruns that our parents watched when they were young. <laughs> yeah, we we got our porn from Channel 13, you know, PBS. <laughs> right. We got our PBS. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a different world. It's hard to believe sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I kind of miss... You know how... <laughs> well, I'm not going to say simple. Um... It was a simple time. Yeah, because no time's ever simple. Like, um, you know, it, I'm always reminded somebody somebody said once, um, you know, oh, I w you know, I wish that uh, things were like they were in the '60s. You know, so much more simple. And I was like, not if you were black. <laughs> what I think about the civil rights movement. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody, I think I heard a comedian say that or something, and it totally rings true. You know. Yeah. Yep. Wasn't simple for everybody. No, sir. But, uh, but I mean, when you're a kid, you know. And <laughs> you were simple. <laughs> yeah. I miss being simpler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. There's just so many, like, Almost too many choices nowadays, and it takes a lot of time to figure out like what you really want, and you know what you're. As far as you know, I don't know. I guess I'm just babbling, but as far as entertainment or you know, yeah, whatever. Well, I, I remember Sorry. this. The um, the best way I know how to put it, like. When you wanted to go see a movie, you, you really wanted to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and when when I was I was the kind of breed that you know I had to go and the credits you know didn't start, um, and I watched it from beginning to end and appreciated every second of it. Um, and and really was in a state of complete awe during the whole movie. Right. And nowadays, just flip around Netflix and oh, watch five seconds of that, ten <laughs> five minutes of that. You know, you don't really appreciate things as much. No, I mean it's like, um, so I still collect records, actual vinyl records, and. Right. You know, I'm happy that it's it's you know made it's making a comeback in, in a pretty pretty big way. You know, maybe because people are kind of missing that. You know, um, but like you buy an album and you pour over the album art while you're listening to the record, and um, there's like a process because you got to flip it, and you know it's more much more immersive. And now like it's just like I don't know. Everyone thinks that music should be free and. So there's no good bands. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it is good music, but well, there is. But I'm just being it's yeah. general. But you know, it's I don't know. I guess I'm just dovetailing what you're saying. Like I don't know, things just aren't as special anymore. You know, because like. You can get free audio software if you like a song, and you can just rip it from YouTube, you know? And then, I don't know. It's disappointing, because then the, the, the person who made that song doesn't get to make any kind of living, you know, because everything's going for free. And, uh, and then they have to go get a job, and then all of a sudden this band you like isn't around anymore because you didn't support them. Now I'm going on a different tangent. I'm going. I'm going down a different road with this. I didn't mean to, but um. <laughs> um well, I, I had I had the uh, thing clicked on just you. And Safira so goes, "Hey Peter, is this screen supposed to just show Kevin?" <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm working on something. I'm working on a cover. Um, oh. you should at least see. Two little screens of, of me and Kevin um, on the bottom. Um, 
I was clicked on him and stayed on him. But I was I was curious about what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, sorry, what I'm doing kinda of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to color this. But yeah, you know, jumping. I I miss like when when like the the powerhouse albums. You know, they can be great songs nowadays, but there's nothing like albums like from our youth, like from beginning to end, that really sent a message, kind of thing. Well, yeah, because any any bands or anybody you know worth anything were writing for records, you know, and the hits kind of. I mean, there yeah. was still like you know pop stuff that was writing for just hit singles, but you know the bands that were worth anything were writing for albums, and now it just seems like I don't know. We're just old, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious, but. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw them post it, saying they're um, 27. They're probably just like you, you old douchebags. <laughs> but uh, I feel who it was like somebody was saying, "Oh, to be young and, and growing up in this time it must be amazing." And, you know, there's some cool things, but I don't know. Every era has its moments. Yeah, you can say that about any time. I mean, that's what people said when we were young and we're, what, Generation X? And now we're the forgotten generation. No one talks about us. It's just millennials and, um, you know, the baby boomers talk about how entitled the millennials are. And and then we're caught in the middle, and I'm just like, nah, the millennials are all right. The baby boomers, you guys are fucking entitled. <laughs> <laughs> you got everything handed to you, and they've spent, you know, four decades ruining it. <laughs> For example, my student loan bill, <laughs> compared to what college was for those buttholes. Yeah, we... Yeah, I actually go outside to go to school. You what? <laughs> we had to go outside to go to school back, back in my day. Yeah, school was in a cave, man. <laughs> but you can go on. <laughs> what was that? You silent out there for a sec. Uh, I'm saying, like, you know... Kids today can go online and you know have a college course set up for them. And <laughs> yeah, well, I did go to. Um, I didn't go to college until I was about 27. I didn't start until then. So you know, 10 years after I graduated high school, because I was too busy going on tour, being a punker, and. Uh, so they had started online courses, I don't know, around then. And I don't know, it was pretty <laughs> awesome because, like, you know, I went to an art school, but you still had to do math and history and all that stuff to get a real degree. And uh, right. so, you know, just take all that stuff online. Be nice, get it out of the way. <laughs> um, oh, so Safira was saying like they don't see the little screens, so oh, is, it, is it bouncing back and forth? Screens. Yeah. Well, be, now it is. When I had it clicked on you, it was just on you. <laughs> oh. So I guess it was on you for a while. Well, that's embarrassing. But now it's. <laughs> That's cool. There, you can go back and watch four hours of me just doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
leave me. I'm not that entertaining. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I'm, uh, oops. Damn it, how am I going to do this? This is a, a page where, like, the, the, um, kind of palette changed. So I got to kind okay. of pick new colors a little bit. previous scene and uh, if it was my own comic I'd probably enjoy doing that but this one I'm just like oh that takes extra time <laughs> foiled again yeah right. you know the lesson learned <laughs> That I already learned, and I'm stupid. I came back into comics as a job. <laughs> is that <laughs> it? Really feels to me that like the only way to go about it and <laughs> is to work on your own stuff. For me, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I think like. What Jeff is doing is is the smartest thing. It's like don't don't get stuck with anything long term. <laughs> you know, just do illustration after illustration after illustration, or you know, painting after painting after painting, um, and sell, sell, sell as you get them done. That's the like it's short. It's like do it, get it done. Sell it. Do it. Get it done. Sell it. Uh, yeah. Any kind of comp is long-term project. <laughs> yeah, and this is the page count on this is pretty substantial. Yeah. Yeah. So disappointed. I thought it was going to be oh. done in June, and then series of un. un, un ugh. Unfortunate events, and now it's going to be all year. You know what I'm going to do when this is done? <laughs> what? I'm going to Disneyland, and that ain't no lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the that's the one in Florida. No, I am or, on the West Coast. No, by you. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna travel all the way across. No, I am. We'll go. Yeah, I'm going to Anaheim. <laughs> um, but I haven't been in a bunch of years since I moved out of California, and um, my mom wants to. I guess for you know my wife, my daughter, me, my brother, his wife, my nephew, their kid, um, in lieu of like any Christmas or birthday presents or anything this year, she just asked us all if we want to go to Disneyland, and it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would always rather go to Disneyland. So if anybody out there watching wants to buy me a birthday present or anything, I have a lot of stuff. I don't know if I need any more stuff. Unless you're doing a rad comic, then I'll take that. But, you know, <laughs> if you want to pay for me to go to Disneyland, <laughs> I'm all about the experience more than the stuff these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you, you could probably set that up like on Amazon? You could do a wish list. So you could just go. Just list my experiences. Travel. <laughs> These are all the experiences I want you to buy me. Where are you? 
Okay. If anybody wants to buy me a, a beach hut vacation in Tulum, that would be fantastic. <laughs> A beach hut. Yeah, I'll go surfing with you. How's that? You pay and I'll take you surfing. <laughs> uh, I'm just dreaming. Oh, man. So I'm trying to... Uh, when I do colors, I try to um, just use a really limited palette. Right. And even though some things like on the page that I'm flatting right now, you know, the when the coloring's done, they're all going to look different, but the root color is the same. Um, but I'm uh, this is looking pretty beige. Have to pop in some stuff. Make it look cooler. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people commenting. Uh, Tristan Grant's in the, the chat. Safar is in the chat. Uh, Carrie Howarth. Uh, I hope I'm uh, is in the chat. She's like, glad I'm not the only grumpy non-millennium college student. <laughs> Smiley face. Um, Generation X? Because <laughs> if you're a baby boomer, you're going to hate me, too. Safira <laughs> uh, says, Kevin, you're going to buy yourself a copy and burn it. In regards to what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, dude, you can. Um, when, uh, when I can do, uh, like, like my video, my YouTube video, when this is done, is going to be me. Right. Probably at the beach, <laughs> having a bonfire, and it's just going to be like a, a video of me throwing pages into it. <laughs> Cooking marshmallows over, <laughs> over a burning copy. I'm just going to like put like two straws in a bottle of Jameson and burn these pages. It'd be great. <laughs> I can't sell them because I'm doing them so fast, and I'm not doing full pages. So, you know, and they're they're just Talking Heads. This is a Talking Heads comic, for the most part, so far. If it was the Talking Heads, it would sell. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is it is about music, so at least that piques my interest. <laughs> um, so far, it's a fictional historical fiction about the mod movement you know I mean I think I've already told you about this but yeah about the mod movement when it started in the UK um, to, I think the story takes place late 1962 so like right before like the stones got together and the Beatles and you know and kinks and all the those bands that you know who all that stuff um, and uh, like the small faces. So so far, the only real person who's shown up is Steve Marriott, who's the singer of the Small Faces and later Humble Pie in the '70s right. stuff. So, um, but he shows up in this as like a 13-year-old. Um, oh, and, and Scott Circling's in the chat too. Hey, buddy. Um, let's see. Kerry goes. I'm Gen X. Uh, Scott says, I haven't been to Disneyland in years. Meet me in November, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know of Jessica Thun Thornton. says, WTF is that? <laughs> I guess uh, in regards to vacation and all. <laughs> oh. I know that feeling. Yeah, I haven't had a vaca a real vacation for a long time. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm going to step away. 
I'll be, I'll be right back shortly. I'm just taking a brief break. You can uh, talk to the troops. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> You're in charge. All right, let me look in the... Uh... Yeah, I'll put I'll put it on the screen on you. Yeah, so let me look. You, got, you got that full attention. All right. Uh, choo -choo. how many pages do you have to do again? So the graphic novel I'm working on is 160 pages. Um, 144 pages are story, and then um. I'm not exactly sure what what the remainder of the pages are going to be, except for I know that there's going to be art on most of them. Um, I think they want they want me to do like a short essay on how I got interested in the mod movement from the '60s, being that I wasn't born until '71, and um, you know the subculture I guess that I belong to, and even as a middle-aged old dude, um, is punk rock. Um, you know, starting in like the mid '80s and stuff, and um, but some of my friends were kind of mod revivalists and scooter boys and stuff like that, and you know, seeing that you know, I can listen to a band like Black Flag and hear the Kinks in them, and the Who and stuff like that, um, kind of piqued my interest in the '90s when punk to me kind of died a bit and became more pop. Um, this doesn't really appeal to me like when I speaking of like younger people and they're like oh I like punk rock it's so great some 41 and blink 182 and like that that's not my punk rock man <laughs> you know or but um, anyway so I got really involved more into going back in music history during the 90s and kind of got into this mod stuff and 60s garage rock and stuff so part of the reason why I got hired and also because of a comic that um, I had done and we'll be working on again and stuff called Monkey Mod, um, and uh, yeah, Scott, it is a ton of work, um, so uh, so anyway, I think they want me to do like a little essay on how I became interested in it as an American growing up punk, so I have to write some stuff, which, which will be easy because I could talk about music forever, um, but yeah, th then I have to do like supplementary um, illustrations and stuff and I think some of it is going to be processed stuff so that's kind of already being done but I don't know exactly what they want I'm just kind of on call to do everything they want um, to fill 160 pages I know the the writer is going to have some pages where he writes an essay and I think um, uh, I don't know if I should this might be speaking out of turn but um, I'll just say this. I think there's a couple like popular comic book professionals who are older that were kind of there um, during the 60s, during this mod time period. And I know I think somebody's doing like a forward or, or another essay kind of in the back. So, um, But anyway, it's 144 pages of story. And then I have to fill in whatever. What do I think of Bad Religion and No Effects? Um, I like 80s No Effects and Bad Religion. Hey, tell you what. <laughs> I'll just uh, turn the screen sharing off real quick and I'll, I'll go get some stuff. Where is it? How do I turn this off? Um, I, I think that No Effects got real poppy and a little overproduced, and most of the stuff on Epitaph Records, um, I feel in the 90s was that way. It doesn't speak to me. It's, I, I like the more raw stuff, the faster stuff, um, the angrier stuff, I guess. Um, but my favorite No Effects record is this one. And I'll find my favorite Bad Religion record. I don't know if you can still hear me. <laughs> this is a nice distraction from what I was doing, so thanks for talking about music. <laughs> or getting me talking about music. So really, I only own uh, two, or one record of each, 
each band. This is the best no effects record in my opinion. This is when they're a three piece. I actually used to go see them for like two bucks at like real shitty little garages and stuff in California. Um, and this is like when they were like a hardcore band, hardcore punk band before hardcore, which is now kind of this kind of tough guy metal stuff. Whereas you know when I got into punk, hardcore was like all us nerdy kids who made zines and stuff and uh, didn't get in fight so much. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite Bad Religion record. Um, I think Suffer's okay, but they start getting a little pop for me there. And I like the seven inch that's got Frogger on it that came out a little bit after this. Um, but this is kind of their hardcore era. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I think of that stuff. Um, but I don't begrudge anybody for uh, you know. For liking the newer stuff, um, I went through that for a while when I was a bit younger, <laughs> in my 20s and 30s. I was like, ah, punk's dead. Um, you know what? What you know what happened? To all these great bands, but now I'm too old. I don't care. You know, if you like what you like. So, try not to be too insulting. But if you know people younger than me want to hear a history lesson, I'm happy to talk about <laughs> music for a long time. Um, Unfortunately for some people, like my wife hates it when I start talking about music. So, anyway, I'm going to share the screen again. Minor Threat, fucking love Minor Threat. Um, really huge, huge, important band for me. Um, unfortunately, I am too young to have seen them. I think they broke up like. Um, like a year or so before I got into it, like the original Misfits, like I really don't like the incarnation of the Misfits that's been around since, what, 96? I actually saw them in 96. Um, before they put out any records, and they it was almost just like a, you know, Danzig era cover band at that point. And, you know, it was a fun show, and it sounded pretty good. And then the records started com coming out, and I just, you know, wasn't really feeling it, but... Another band I didn't get to see that broke up about a year before I got into punk rock. If we're talking like 1984. I was 13 when I discovered, you know, it's hardcore punk rock stuff. Um, I miss seeing those bands, but I love them. I got to see Sam Hain a couple times. It was right after the Misfits, back in the day. So, I don't know. Oh, Session Drummer. Cool. Yeah, I've been playing in bands until... Um, Social Distortion, same thing. Scott, Mommy's Little Monster, I love that album. And uh, 1945, the 7-inch record that came before that. And then I don't hate the stuff that came after, but a little too polished for me, got a little bit more poppy. Um... Some of the stuff I dig, like some of the stuff on, um, I guess, what is it, Prison Bound? Was that the record? Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate what they, or what Mike Ness has done, because, you know, um, God, the original guitar player's dead, and Chuck Biscuits is out of the band. and um, But yeah, I really like Mommy's Little Monster quite a bit. Um, like, uh, Scott, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, um, God, why is it, it's escaping me now. It's a tour documentary with early social distortion, youth brigade, uh, they show up at the discharge house and see, or discharge, discord house and see, um, minor threat, um, but yeah, social distortion, youth brigade, and, uh, God, who else is in that? Anyway. Oh, God, what is it called? Peter, are you back? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got to go get something because I got I got a movie right now. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, everybody. Uh, for those of you wondering, I'm doing a cover. Um, I'm thinking if anybody um, watching... Wants to wants to come in and Are chat. You uh, you're, you're more than welcome to. I might I might open it up. Another state of mind. Sorry. 
No problem. No problem. I've been talking about music the whole, pretty much the whole time since you left. <laughs> cool, cool. Oh. Yes, I'm back, Tristan. <laughs> yeah, I know you want to do just do one on one. I have people in here one on one, so I can uh, shut well, up and bail if you want <laughs> someone else to come yeah, in. No, it's um, it's eleven o'clock. Uh, this is going to one o'clock. It's the last two hours. I'm kind of feeling it now, so I think uh, having extra people come in if they wish is is a good time. So uh, just shout out in the chat, or uh, you know. Let me know somehow. <laughs> Hit me up on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> I'll send you a link. Yeah, shut me up. Don't come in here and shut me up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not good. It's like I, I, you know, I had no idea if I could make it eight hours. And I mean, I've been taking breaks every now and then, uh, okay. but that's to see the chaos in the other part of the house. <laughs> Cats trying to break in on you. Cats trying to break in. Lisa, Lisa's trying to make popcorn now. Or, our microwave is the worst microwave in the world, and and the uh, this. You know, it usually spins or it used to spin, but it's it stops spinning, so it just either burns stuff or leaves it cold, depending on wh wh where it's located. Right. <laughs> so yeah, you know. my wife and I, you know, had always lived in apartments since leaving our you know our parents' house. Um, now we live in a house that had a microwave and you know everything built in and stuff, but we had been using a microwave that I had had been using since uh, '95. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> <For> last year. <laughs> <clears throat> well, ours is one of those. Um, it's a microwave, but you could also use it as an oven. Make, you know, you can actually cook stuff in it. It, ha it has many functions, which we never figured out. <laughs> you could toast stuff. Hmm, that's weird. Toaster oven microwave hybrid? Yeah. Genius. But it, I mean, you know, it looks like a microwave. It has more buttons. Convection oven, um, but we had like, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what it's called. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying words. <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> um, you getting a little punch drunk? Yeah, I have a feeling. I guess nobody daring enough to uh, want it, want it in. Why not? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's well, okay. I'm gonna keep going with the music theme. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna Man, stop. Go for it. Hey, what's your favorite record or one of them? I know it's too hard to say one. Like, what did you grow up listening to? I'll, say, I'll put it that way. Um, well, you know, uh, my parents listened to the older stuff, so it was Sinatra or uh, Dean Martin, 
um, Bill Pruner, similar Bill stuff. Like that. Yeah. Uh, you're then you have to listen to that. It's like, prerequisite. My oldest, my oldest brother was like Beatles. Although we were all into the Beatles, um, you know, what was it? Uh, Anthony, which is the next one down, um, had the albums um, or stole the albums from other members in the family. And uh, <laughs> right. uh, he had a lot, a lot of rock, a lot of Zeppelin or. Or Pink Floyd, along those lines. I mean, I guess a, a lot of everything was rock back when. Sure. Um, Linda Ronstadt, um, late, later Pat Benatar, but Stephen Nix, Fleetwood Mac, um, Blondie, you know, all that, all that stuff. The Who. Rolling Stones. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wasn't a collector when I was young. I listened to what it was on the radio, but it was all kind of that same stuff. Radio uh, used to be... to a rock station. Radio used to be, like, something to listen to back then. Now it's just garbage, you know? Like... Yeah. Even if you want to listen to the classic rock station, quote unquote, it's it's they've cherry picked, you know, some sort of top forty hit out of that that you're only gonna hear, you know, the same Led Zeppelin song every week at on Wednesday at noon or something, you know, or maybe three times a day. And so. Uh, uh, so Ferris says, "How long have you been on, Peter? I've been on since five. It's eleven now." Um, Scott says, "Not enough for too long." Uh, yeah, you can definitely come in, Scott. Whenever you're ready. I'm here right for now. another two hours. <laughs> Your show. Come on, Scott. <laughs> Get in now. He has to put his daughter to sleep, so. Uh, might have to take a little bath um, here in a second. <laughs> That my favorite thing, um, the rock station, you know, it's like I remember they did play like the song over and over, uh, The Doors and The Dead and uh, I don't know, like all the same stuff over and over. And, you know, stuff you love, but anything you love, you, you hear every day, it's a little sickening. But um, right. there was. Uh, Sunday night program called I, I forget the whole name it was like Idiots Delight or I don't know Idiot, Idiot something but it was like this brilliant charming guy that like really knew music and bands and um, he, he did a lot more alternative music and it, it's stuff like, you know, I knew at the time, I couldn't even tell you, like, half the stuff he played. Um, but he just had story after story after story. Um, and it was just like, I listened to him, like, from the beginning of the show to the end of the show. And that was, like, my first real taste of real radio. Mm -hmm. It was Sunday night, and I loved it. See, that was, like, a cool time because, like, it was before Clear Channel and Viacom, lo you know, owned American Radio. You know, you had local programming. Yeah, yeah. You would get local bands. You would get local, um, you know, like, you know, I grew up listening to, and granted, the music I listened to, they, they sanctioned for After Midnight, but, um, you know, I'd still get to hear, you know, local punk rock on, like, like, the punk rock channel, you know, even when I was playing the bands that people cared about, um, you know, I got to be on those shows and stuff, and I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> it was, you know, you could discover new bands back yeah, then, like absolutely. that. 
Um, I mean, I guess now you can discover new bands. Just go to YouTube, but... <laughs> just different. Well, that's where I got my, my taste for alternative, you know, beyond just listening to rock, which is what I got from my brothers, you know, influence from, from them. I was back, yeah. I mean, I remember when the term alternative first started being thrown around was actually, you know, and everyone says the 90s, but it was in the 80s. And that's where, like, oh, and same with indie music, you know, where now indie music is its own genre, yeah. whereas before it just meant independent music. <laughs> you go to a record store and you'd shop for, you know, like, Dead Kennedys is, you know, probably my favorite band of all time, you know. You want a Dead Kennedys record, you go into the alternative section or um, the indie section, you know. Now indie means bands like Iron and Wine and stuff, and to me that just sounds like 70s soft rock, you know, the AM stuff, AM radio music. I don't know. It's weird. I had a, a friend of mine. music is wussier now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a friend of mine who lived in Manhattan, um, and he into, into, like, I think Dead Kennedys, uh, Echo and the Bunny Man. Mm -hmm. um, just stuff. Uh, I might have heard one or two songs here, here and there. So I mean, you know, you you get influenced by everywhere. You know, definitely girlfriends. <laughs> it's like what well, are you yeah, I definitely have like Smiths tapes in my car and stuff like that. Go on a date. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this girl doesn't want to hear Septic Death right now, so. And put on the cure or something. <laughs> um, not, the band, he's always been a real big fan of the, that yeah. band. Oops. Yeah, before punk rock, I was really into uh, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Dio and Scorpions and um, Slayer was like a brand new band. Um, then I might start getting into the, all the like satanic stuff, all the um, thrash metal, that kind of stuff. Right. I, you know, it's like I heard that stuff. I don't know where where I heard it. But, I mean, you know, being in New York. Um, yeah. New lots York and... Lots, uh, lots of things. <laughs> where I grew up in California. It's like, real big for both punk and thrash metal. Yeah. I mean, New York, obviously, like, in the 70s and stuff, but... You know... Then you get like punk and hardcore punk influencing metal, and then you get thrash metal. So, you know, in New York, Anthrax is considered one of the, the big four in the thrash metal world. Right. I think they even have shirts that say New York Hardcore on it. <laughs> New York, man. New York, <laughs> Tristan is into local punk and hardcore. Yeah. I, uh... Student radio guy. Wait, say that again? Yeah. I guess he, um... Okay, his whole comment was, the favorite radio for me was a local college station where... They let the student radio guys play anything, lots of local punk and hardcore. They did that for a few years ago, at least. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Is that Tristan said that? Is that what you said? Yeah, Tristan Grant. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, there was a, uh, where I went to high school, California, um, not at my school, but I guess sanctioned by the school district for all the schools in the area, and I never did it. Um, but uh, 
there was a, a radio station that was broadcast just, you know, I guess within listening range of, I think there was like five schools in our school district or something. And, uh, yeah, and they had a radio station, and uh, it was really awesome because it was like most of the people apparently, or kids interested in radio at that point, where it seemed like they were all into like thrash metal and punk and stuff. You know, and you might get like post punk stuff like Joy Division and um, The Cure and things like that, which are also bands I really like. Um, you know, maybe like a death rock or goth kind of thing or something. But it was pretty much all like, you know, my click. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, it was a really rad station. And when I go back home, I turn it on, it's still going on, but. I don't know. You know, <laughs> the music changed. Yeah. It doesn't like, um, Stephen King has his own radio station out in Maine. I think he plays hardcore kind of every really? or something. I could be wrong. Um, I'm surprised because he's a. I know it's, it's, it's not, not popular music. I forget exactly what, uh, I'd be surprised if he played. Well, I guess there's right wing punks too, but Sim King's kind of a right winger. So, I'd be surprised if he played <laughs> stuff I like. go to many shows back in the day? No. I, w I was a, you know, overprotected kid. Um, I, di I didn't really get out until I got out. <laughs> uh, um, but even then, you know, CDs or anything? Um, yeah, but later, um, I don't think I saw anything really Really super special. It was mostly actually people we knew, Your friends, bands, and like, stuff. Like uh, you know, my 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 brother's ex girlfriend's band played there a couple times. Um, that's where he met Amanda Connor, his his wife now, um, or at least one of the places she came and hung out. I remember because I was going to hit her, but. Um, Anyway, uh, <laughs> it, uh, I'm trying to remember who I saw play there. Uh, nothing special, I guess. And half the time, I was mostly drunk. Um, <laughs> well, that's what you do there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I guess like, my my best experience was, you know, wasn't until. 2000 something. Um, we went to one of the, one of those clubs, like basement, like you know, you, you go through the bar, which is street level, into the back, down some stairs, around some corner, down a hallway, and and like there's this little room. It's got like Christmas lights. It's mostly dark, and it's a circle of people. And, and a friend brought me there, and she's like, "I, I think you'll like this." And this guy just like walked to the cent center of the circle, had no shirt on, you know, had a mic with a cord following him, and just did you know heavy punk. Like in in your face because you were right up against it. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. I um. I've gotten to play CBs a few times. Uh, back when uh, I was touring a lot. Cool. And, uh, I actually um. Played its last week, open. This is the last time I played there. And just did, you know, heavy punk, like, in, in your face, because you were right up against it. 
Hey, Scott. How's hey, it going? Scott. Man. I've been to Oh, we're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah, you got oh, your oh, uh, video oh, playing? Mm. Yeah. Actually, I, got, I got kicked out of CBGB's once. Um, right before my band was supposed to play, because uh, they were they were selling Tall Boys of Paps Blue Ribbon, and pe- you know, for six bucks. And uh, <laughs> and I went around the corner to a liquor store, and I bought a bottle of Jameson, and I snuck it in there. And they caught me right before we were supposed to play. <laughs> and, uh, and it was for the CMJ. You know what I'm talking about, Peter? Paul's Music Journal. It's like a... It's like a... Um, it's like citywide where a lot of bands of different genres, mostly, you know, types of rock and roll, play at different clubs. And it goes on for like three or four days. It's almost like um, South by Southwest kind of thing. But New York. Oh, okay. And uh, right, right. our label used to fly us out from California, um, also because the the label started in New York, um, so it was kind of mandatory. They were a big CBGB label back in the '80s, and uh, anyway, so yeah, we'd fly out there, and um, it's this record label called Revelation, and a lot of the Bands on there are straight edge hardcore bands. Well, my band was not. <laughs> so, yeah, I got kicked out before we were supposed to play, and our record label this is like a big deal. And I got the singer of another band kicked out because he was drinking off the bottle. And but you know we were like, hey man, <laughs> you know we're outside, like whatever, we're we're punks, who <laughs> cares? Yeah. We'll get in. I, was, I don't know. That was a pretty fun night. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Uh, not much. Kind of trying to get over this cold. I've been sick all weekend, and I don't know. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have hopped on here, but but I will. I might not be that talkative. Yeah, I'm, I've just got like massive, uh, massive deadlines, and I'm trying to push through this cold. And it's like, yeah. uh, I'm either, you know, if I start snoring or something, it, or you know, at least you'll know I'm alive. If I'm, if I, if I'm not responsive, I may just be dead. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've never had to call yeah. you or uh, YouTube. <laughs> I've never had to call YouTube. <laughs> I've never had to uh, call nine one one for someone out of state. So, yeah. Oh man, it just sucks because I mean, you know, you know it is this business. You you can't take a sick day. So no, it's I, terrible. Yeah, you gotta just push through it. So, and now I don't know. I don't know. I think some of it might, you know, it's like the tail end of this cold. But I think some of it just might be stress. Because it's like you're either stressing because you don't have money, or you're stressing because you've got so much work. You don't know whether you're gonna find the time to do it. So, right. <laughs> yeah, we were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier. Oh. Yeah. Artists are just stressed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in art school, you know, take, you know, I take art history classes, which you know, it's like, what well, you'd expect the Renaissance and you know, cave paintings and all that kind of stuff. But then there was a a class that was required that was a um, history of American illustration, uh-huh. and uh, and it also talked about like I guess it was most mostly like North American because it was there was Canadian artists and Mexican artists and stuff, but included in that. But um, you know the artists that we studied were like Norman Rockwell and you know N. C. Wyeth and like all these people during the Golden Age of illustration. How great they had it! You know they're like rock stars and. Um, you know, and it really, really got us all like psyched. You know, like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, we see like stills of them in like Life magazine with these like models and 
um, you know, <laughs> whatever, like, uh, have, you know, at some famous party of the day or something, get out and actually start working in the field, and it's like, oh, man, what a difference 50 years makes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish I, I wish I retained half of what I learned in uh, art history class. I don't remember anything, <laughs> really. I mean, some stuff will come back to me. Like, sometimes I'll see, like, a fine art painting, and I'll, I'll recognize who it was or whatever, but I don't know. I just, that, for whatever reason, that class didn't stick with me very well. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff where I've, I've seen, you know, actually some of the fine art stuff I really dug, you know. Because um, there's a lot I didn't dig, because it was art history, and it wasn't taught by an artist. It was taught by an art historian who doesn't right. do art themselves, you know. Yeah. And so their idea was so, like, you know, half of us were, like, rolling our eyes if we were still awake. So we're like, listen, lady, you don't even do this stuff, <laughs> you know. But there's some artists that I really dug, and, and I've since seen their stuff and told my wife, I'm like, oh, man, this artist right here, check this out. This piece is so awesome. I can't remember who it's by or what it's called, but it's awesome. I think I did a paper on it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would I would appreciate it a lot more if I took it now. Like, back, you know, like back in high school and stuff, like, I had, like, no interest in history. Oh, you were that young. Like that. And, and now, like, I'll, I mean, I, I just blow through, like, Stuff You Should Know podcasts and stuff like that. And I mean, that stuff's all interesting to me now, but back then, I could, you know, I just didn't. Didn't care, and I still, you know, I listen to it, but I still, I just have a hard time retaining stuff, and I'll remember bits here and there, but I still like listening to it. But sometimes it goes in one ear out the other. Right. Yeah. See, so I take it you were you were younger. Like I didn't go to college until um, ten years after high school. Yeah. No, I I went pretty much straight out out of high school. Yeah. So at that point, I was and I was paying for it my myself. So I was, I think I. I had a different mindset than if I had gone straight out of high school. Like, I dropped out of community college three times <laughs> straight out of high school. Yeah, see, that's all I ever did was community college, so I didn't. I don't have massive uh, student loan debts, thank God. Yeah, dude, because now <laughs> it's it doesn't matter in art, you know. Yeah. Unless I get a master's and want to teach, but that's not a great paycheck either. Which is weird because, like, my, I don't even think my art instructor <laughs> even graduated high school. Like, the guy who ran the whole program. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, this is the, he, he must have had, like, a GED or something. But I, it was just, I think it was somehow all his work experience. Yeah. I mean, I had teachers like that for sure. There's a, um, I guess the reason why I'm saying that now is, like, um, there was a, uh, I was like three years ago. No, longer than that. Like four years ago, because my wife wasn't even pregnant yet. But um, where I was trying to get a job at a local um, art school here in town, because a lot of teachers in the illustration department were using big illustration party time and things from Art and Story Supreme in their syllabus. Oh, that's cool. And so I was like, yeah, you think? And so I was like. <laughs> So I was like, hey, I'm the guy who is you're using for school. Um, <laughs> how about, you know, uh, give me a job. You know, maybe I'll like, teach a workshop to start or something, you know. Oh, you don't have enough experience. And I'm like, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, <laughs> all these teachers are using my stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's because now that I think about it, because for a while there was a, I don't know, some, some art school that uh, had me on the board and had me like you know looking at their curriculum and everything like that and I sat on like a couple meetings and they never like called me back after that but yeah and they didn't seem to have a problem that I didn't have any kind of degree or anything I just have you know ex work experience and a couple certificates for whatever you know, I don't know what those are worth <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the degree's not worth much more, you know, much less certificate, so. Yeah. I don't know. 
I think Arch is the hard, hard racket. No, I'm gonna mute. My, I'm gonna mute myself here for a little bit because uh, my wife and daughter just got home from some friend's house. So I'm gonna go second right. get to my daughter, and I uh, will be back. I may be here when you get back. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe I'm not gonna mute this for some reason. I can't find my mouse on my screen. <laughs> All right. Yes, indeed. Oh. So, so Peter, what is this this challenge that you're doing right now? Um, this is something I created on my own. Okay. Um, you know, as as in part as as soon as you no, know, we we figured out how to do. Um, live streaming on YouTube as opposed to uh, G Plus Hangout. There's there's a slight difference that you have that live comments feed. Um, and as soon as we figured out that, uh, it says, you know, the longest you can go is eight hours. Right. So, That's what I heard. Um, you know, and and me. Yeah, me and Jeff um, just joking back and forth, like, you know, he did six-hour hangout, um, maybe six-hour plus. Um, he's like, yeah, that's the longest hangout I've done. And I was like, I'm going to take up that challenge. I'm going to do eight hours. <laughs> you know, just this straight comment. Um, so in part... Just because of pure silliness, um, but I had this cover to do. Uh, this is for a you know, independent publisher, and um, I was struggling. Just like you know, I came up with the idea, but just struggling with defining the different parts of it uh, better, and you know, dealing with multiple uh, projects going on and lots of things going on with life, I said, you know, this morning I, I woke up and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do an eight-hour hangout tonight and really just work on this cover. Um, so here we are. You know, it's I got another hour and a half or whatever it is to go and... Uh, you know, however much more I get done, and that will be it. Are you gonna just ride it till the wheels fall off, or are you gonna see if it, if it goes the eight? Are you gonna quit at eight, or see if it keep? Are you just testing testing the limits of uh, Google Hangouts? Well, I mean, it it says the limit is um, the streaming limit on YouTube is eight hours. Oh, okay. I okay. don't think it would say that unless it really meant it. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not going to test it. Um, you know, I'm just going to end it right before or something. Uh, but I'll consider that eight hours. And <laughs> um, you know, I know like a regular hangout can go much longer. As you know, maybe you know, crazy at least ten hours. Um, or you mean maybe not recorded or. The, the um, regular G Plus setup Hangout can go 10 hours or more. Okay, cool. I heard. You know, you, you look at um, the random Hangout going on, or like, former ones, and you can see the the, uh, the time on it, and they seem to, you know, I haven't looked at it in a while, but a lot of them go really long. Uh, it's just... A restriction to streaming on YouTube. Yeah, in you know the eight hours. So. Yeah, because you, I well, it used to didn't it used to be your videos could only be like fifteen minutes long or something way back when. Wasn't there a time where that was the case? Well, probably. I mean, you know, YouTube was way different two two years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, is it is it 
almost an entirely different look to them and, and different setup. Um, doing, I mean, you know, doing Hangouts and, and actually G Plus uh, didn't exist that long, you know, that much ago. Um, so things, things constantly change. Um, Yeah, I mean, Google Hangouts, I think it's like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> now, especially now that they yeah, now that I mean, figured out how to do the, uh, the, um, the chat feature and everything. Because at first that was the problem. Because yeah. I, I was doing live streams and I wasn't happy with like Ustream, and, but it had the chat feature, so... I kind of kind of wish uh, the other Google stuff would, you know, <laughs> like uh, Google Plus, <laughs> would kind of take off because I don't know. Facebook's kind of it's like now all all my basically <laughs> all my likes and everything on my on my fan page are like, you know, useless. I guess like that's what I read anyway recently that, you know, no matter what, now you have to pay for to to reach people. Yeah, that's, that's sort of a skin. But I mean, I, I find Facebook frustrating, and maybe it's because you know I have changed like what I'm posting to be more business. So maybe that's affected my audience, but. Uh, I, I know part of it is just that it's harder to reach people. It's harder to, to see what people are up to. You know, the only way I could tell what people were up to is by going to their pages directly. And that, you know, I have too many friends to, to start doing that to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I should have. I should have just tried to use my regular personal page as like my actual page and. Isn't isn't that what you use, or do you have a do you have a uh, like a I, fan page? I, um, I have a fan page, but for 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 my reach any kind of audience, I have to reshare on my regular page. Yeah. Um, just be, be, because you know the, the restrictions of Facebook and the fact that they do want you. To pay for ads, and you know, regardless of you know if they hit the audience you want them to hit or not or whatever, that's how Facebook is set up. That you know, it makes money off of you posting ads. Um, yeah, it's all it's all a game. Yeah, and it constantly changing. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with. So let's see. It's Jeff said um, he'd come in for an hour, but I don't see him around. Um, just checking. Oh wait, he might have seen. So, hey, did uh, did uh, the one guy that was supposed to be on uh, the Monday show on Jeff's show? Did they ever figure out what happened? Is he going to be on or? Um, he will be on. It, it's just a matter of you know AM PM confusion. Yeah. So I'm not sure. You know, it might be Monday. Next Monday. We'll see. Yeah, I was, I was looking forward to uh, him having a guest in all. Yeah, I was interested in that, what he had to say, you know. Yeah. I'm sure he'll make it on. Yeah, but I'm... 
<laughs> I'm I'm digging Jeff's show with the with you and uh, Mike on there and everything. It's yeah, I know he was asking today, you know, what people thought of it, but yeah, I mean, I like it. I like the dynamic and everything, so it's pretty funny. Well, it's definitely, you know, from, from my perspective, it's, um, it's, it's definitely fun to do, and I'm um, getting work done while being a at. Uh, so it, it's, it's good for us. I mean, that's why Jeff does it that way, and that's why Mike joins in. Um, you know, I, I love that aspect. And that's also the way I'm doing this this way. You know, it's, it's I'm forcing myself publicly to make some progress on this damn cover, which I've been sitting on. Um, and and it's worked. You know, I wouldn't have got this much progress. I might not have done as good a job. And who knows? Um, you know, I still have a long way to go. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm better in the inking stage, and I'm good at finishing. So um, I have confidence. You know, it's it's going going to be pretty good at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like doing a bunch of like vector artwork right now, coloring, which I've done so much of. It's kind of second nature. But like, it depends what it is. Like, uh, you know, the the other day when I was on, I was I was like headed like resize a bunch of stuff and it was a little hard to do that and talk but it just depends what you know what it is like so I don't know if last that one time I was on Jeff's show if I got as much done but but if I'm doing something like I am now um, yeah I could definitely probably get, get a lot more work done and definitely enjoy my work day better yeah uh, yeah well, you know, I mean, it's all spawned from uh, uh, us doing the Archester's Hangouts and, and Studio Synergy and all that. Um, you know, except the thing is, when I, when I was doing all that, I was sketching, um, but not, like, actually focusing on what I was sketching. I was just kind of fooling around because I figured... Oh, I gotta, I gotta focus. I gotta post. I gotta get people on. I gotta, you know, message people and blah 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 and everything else. Uh, but you know, it's becoming more and more second nature to to man the control panel and, and get things done too. You do a lot of vector stuff, Scott. What's that? Do you do a lot of vector stuff? Uh, mostly all the game design stuff I do is pretty much vector. Yeah, I guess it'd have to be, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully, you know, I'm kind of worried that everything's going to go 3D and then I'm going to have a hard time finding work. But as long Start as people learn Maya, <laughs> what's that? Start learning Maya. <laughs> I don't want to learn. I've tried. I just I can't wrap my head around the 3D stuff. I don't know. I've I've tried it. I don't know. But yeah, no, it's it's I'm I'm pretty proficient at it now. Um, you know, it's a lot of people don't like it's tedious some yeah. of this stuff, but you know, and I, some of it I don't know why they really need it vector. Like, cause right now I'm kind of I wish I could show up, but I don't know if I can. But it's like a it's kind of like a cartoon map of Australia where you know this characters are trying to take over the world continent by continent. So. I'm working on Australia right now, but it's it could probably have been like painted in Photoshop because everything. The weird thing is everything is usually exported to like a PNG or whatever right. for the games. But but yeah, but I guess just if you want to resize it or whatever, and it's it's a good thing now because like with every time a new phone comes out, they've got different resolution or whatever, so you can always bump it back up and stuff. So I don't know. Good live trace isn't better. You know, I never do. I never use that. I, 
I guess I should, because I, I guess I just remember way back in the days when it was real crappy, but I guess it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, it's still, well, it's still, I don't know, I haven't done it for, used it for a long time. Um, I pretty much just stopped doing any vector for clients, but um, I, I just, I never was fast at it. Yeah. I could do it, but I'm so slow at it. Yeah, there's di there's different things, different, like there's a style that I work in for vector, like the stuff I use for my posters and stuff that I'm pretty proficient in. Right now I've got to kind of do a different, a little bit of a different style, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, that, uh, Monkey Mod, like, cartoon animated trailer thing I did five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was all done in Flash, but, um, I used PNGs, but at the time, Flash, there was like a, sort of like a, you know, in Star Wars, if you look at the unedited version, you can kind of see the square, like faded boxes around. Yeah. TIE Fighters and stuff. It kind of looked like that, so I, I didn't like that. So it's like, Sh oh, crap, you know, i got to make this stuff vector. So I drew it really big <laughs> and then did live traits so that um, when everything shrank down, it got rid of all that jagged look. Yeah, I did that before with a project like a flash thing too. It was like some I don't know, some independent film I was working on. And uh yeah, it worked all right. But it's just like it you, I had to do a bunch of retouches and have you ever done like rotoscoping? <laughs> uh not since college, but that that's a pain <laughs> yes. I never yeah. want to do that again. <laughs> Yeah, I've done a lot. I did, I, for, for a while, I was getting a bunch of jobs doing that kind of stuff. That was real big for a while, and then it kind of went away. Uh, get work with Ralph Bakshi. He's making films again. <laughs> there you go. Rotoscope master. Well, I'm talking, well, maybe rotoscoping's not the, you know, I'm trying to remember what the, uh, there was a movie, it was a Philip K. Dick movie with, uh, it was animated, but it was that rotoscope, basically where you draw over frames. Do you remember that? Had, I forgot what it was yeah. called. Oh, was it like Ethan Hawke was in it or something? Yeah, and I think Robert Downey Jr. Uh, might have uh, been Scanner in it. Darkly. Yeah, yeah, Scanner Darkly. Yeah. So, yeah, that type of stuff. I used to have to do a bunch of that. Uh, but not animated, just stills, you know. Take a photograph and make it look like that. Gotcha. So I would I would do some live trace and then I'd have to do a bunch of other touch up stuff to make it look like have that effect to it. Yeah. yeah. I really like to get back to animation, but uh, Yeah, I don't know. I just don't have the patience for animation. <laughs> it's it's so much work and that's not something that I could make money off of. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, that's what you gotta think about <laughs> money. Uh, uh, Scott, were I you watching the beginning of the show? Probably not. I I I tuned in real like earlier on. I was watching, and then I then I had to go take my or pick my daughter up from school, and then I've been like in and out all day. She has dance and all this stuff, and and so. But uh, yeah, I was on for a little bit, and I and I got off. All right, I was curious if you caught um, Kevin coming on, because he showed something off that you would probably be excited about. No, you want to see? I, I wasn't around when Kevin <laughs> first got on. Uh, what was that? Yeah, I'll just I'll show you. It's it's like let it's ten short seconds maybe at the most. Yeah. Um, let's see, i got to share a different screen here. Hold on. Yeah, share screen. Hold on a second. Okay. Hey, look, there's Scott. <laughs> uh, all right, you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. If it'll open. Yeah. There we go. Oh, cool. 
Awesome. That's coming up. <laughs> Man, uh, I mean, you've got some you've got some skills in graphic design too, as well. I, I dig all the you know you always have this kind of retro look to your stuff. Thanks. You know where I I, I don't know. I appreciate that. I don't know that I'm great, but um, I uh, it's just all this interest in like you know mod stuff and everything. And there's a book. Um, I don't know if it's still out. It was a little pricey, but it was you know who Saul Bass is. Oh yeah. Yeah, he did like yeah. the vertigo covers, he did a bunch of stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. I and know. so, I mean, to be quite honest, I feel like I'm just trying to rip him off, but doing, like the poor man, the poor man's <laughs> version at best, <laughs> you know, of Saul Bass. I really like that graphic design style, but you know, I didn't even know I was interested in graphic design until. A while ago, but um, I don't know. It's uh, all the style I like is all the '50s and '60s stuff, and you know, I have a feeling that that's falling out of fashion because Mad Men isn't as popular or something. So, with with that intro, I mean, you said you weren't probably going to start that buck up till after the end of the year, right? Um, well, at first, I thought it was going to be June. I thought this book was going to be done by June, but bunch of shit hit the fan and now it's November and I just don't want to wait until November to work on Monkey Mod again. You oh, know? so you're going to try to find a way to do it or? Yeah, I was telling Peter I saw some really cheesy like um, meme or something that, you know, everyone's got that cheesy friend on Facebook who always puts, you know, memes yeah. up to make them feel better about how sad they are or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, and, but it said something like, um, you know, there, there's never enough time. There will never be enough time or something. Um, you have to make time. I can't remember. But, but I was like, all right, this one rings true. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that was the best time. So, you know, it, you know, and I was always telling Peter and anybody else who's listening, so I'll try to make it fast, but, you know, just, I don't know, I, I, I didn't want, the momentum seems to already kind of, you know, I don't know, the momentum that I had seems to be kind of going away a little bit, but, you know, there's still enough in me to get it going again. Um, the unfortunate thing is now it's going to be even harder to do it, but I just, I don't want to wait, you know, I'm already so fed up with it being, you know, five years since the last thing came out. Yeah. And that was a tiny little deal. I mean, even that, that goofy short thing that me and Mark did, that was originally done five years ago, but we didn't do anything with it until recently, you know. Right. So... Yeah, I know. I, I'm desperate to get back to work on my, my book, too, but it's like I've got a whole other comic book I've got to illustrate now, and I don't even know how... I have. I just have no idea I'm going to do all this stuff, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah I don't know. I, th you know. I think everybody who's completed the 100 days feels similar. You know, it's like, yeah, it's I got all this client work now, and, and working on these comic books now and that's great you know my finances are going to pick up and, and things will even out in that direction uh, but meanwhile you know it's like I want to get back to the comics I'm creating and, and get those done and get those out and um, you just gotta make time somewhere <laughs> yeah you know and Anybody who's watched my videos knows how I feel about the illustration business these days, so... Yeah. I just, you know, I, I just... I don't know. I, I'm going to explain in the first Making Comics video that will hopefully be out this week. Um, <clears throat> if not this week, next week at the latest, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to explain more in detail, I guess, why I'm doing it now and all that kind of stuff, but... Just, yeah... I'm <laughs> real fed up with the business. 
Yeah, I know. I like last year is just like just kind of a pretty big struggle, and then just I finally made some headway because it was like it's almost like I started over again, you know, because I had been working for companies and stuff, and then right. I went from one game company to another, and then the then they would, you know, one, you know. I got laid off from the other one, went under within three months, and then I was just picking up bits and pieces here and there. So now I finally, finally got some decent paying stuff, and I've got work. But you know, I just I don't know how long it'll last. I mean, and it's just it's hard to find good paying work, you know. Yeah, um, I mean that's I, I, you know if you've been talking it or if you talk to any illustrators who've been doing this for, you know, any length of time, it seems like this is kind of a theme. Everyone's like. You know, I had a, a pretty decent glory day as an illustrator. The recession came. Everything really changed. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's... I don't see any any signs of it changing back anytime soon. And, you know, people who are more successful than me are leaving the field, you know, because they're having the same problem. And, you know, these are people who, who Disney has in their Rolodex, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's just like sinking ship. Yeah, sinking ship. And, and I think, you know, listening to Jeff, and I think, you know, I kind of mentioned this before in my videos too, is like, I just kind of wonder when these companies are going to look around and need, a, need you know, an illustrator, an artist, and we're not there anymore. We can't deal with their low rates and lack of vacations and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's got to be decent, there's got to be more decent paying stuff out there. I just, it's, where do you find it, you know? Yeah, and then you're competing with, like, you know, how many thousands of other people? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's just it's so rough right now. Yeah, if I if I wasn't lucky enough to get into the game design and I just kind of I don't know I kind of fell into it sort of I mean I was I had been designing like little emoticons and like face when Facebook first came out and so I had some like that wasn't really you know I, I had just some rudimentary game stuff and then I I kind of I was able to get hired at a place and I kind of learned from there and that's really that's what's kind of keeping me afloat is just that I've been have some experience in that field, you know. Right. Well, that's good because I mean, it seems like games might be like one of the more thriving parts of the industry. Yeah, but you know my, you know my uh, skills are kind of limited as far as like just like social game. I could I could never do like. Uh, like the big video games like you see on PlayStation and stuff like that. That's just way beyond probably what I'm capable of doing. So as long as these little social games keep going. Or yeah, my games, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. That's not my skill set. And, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to be 44 this year. I feel like sure you can teach old dog, dog to tricks, but... I want to get good at whatever to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some nipples in here. So, um, Jeff said he'll be on in a little bit. Getting feedback. Uh, I'm going to take one last break. Uh, the show's going to end approximately an hour from now, uh, but we can still hang out and talk for anybody who's surviving. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if I'll make it an hour from now or not. <laughs> I, st I still got to wake up early. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. Take my kids off to school and all that. I understand. Uh, this is right, so I'll be back in a short bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, this might sound terrible, but I'm kind of looking forward to my daughter going to school. Uh, you know what? <laughs> You'll, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been there, so yeah, it is. Uh, it definitely is very helpful. But it's like the other thing is, it's almost like 
taking them to school, picking, well, I, depending on how your school works. Like my daughter goes to a charter school and they don't have like a bus or anything, so I got to take her and pick her up. Right. So, uh, um, so I mean, even stuff like that is just time out of your day. So it's like you go pick her up, you gotta, and then you're you're working and you gotta kind of plan your day so you can st have a stopping point and go do all that. So and you know, and then there's days where she's at they're they're at their mom's, which is helpful too. So I mean, but it's just yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have them around, and you know, you don't want them to grow up fast by any means, but when no. they do, when they kind of when they can kind of, you know. Entertain themselves and do stuff like that. It's it's just different, you know. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's gonna be three this month, the end of the month. So, you know, I guess it's another six months or a year or something for preschool. Yeah. So, gotta wait. Then you know, and I love that you know I get to spend so much time with her, but this work schedule is killing me. Yeah, I was. Like like when I was married, like we like my ex wife, she worked nights and everything, and I worked during the day. So there's always one of us with the kids. So it was, you know, it was a pretty good situation. I never had to pay that, you know, super huge daycare fees or anything like that. So yeah, I'm almost thinking. I don't know. I got to look into it. I probably can't do it. <laughs> it. Might be a pipe dream. I was thinking about today. Like, um, if I could just hire like a nanny for one day, <laughs> one day. Yeah. Hey, one yeah, day. you know, so you don't you don't have any family over there, right? No, all our yeah. both both my wife and I are from California. Yeah, we've got no one. Yeah, it's made things really hard. For, yeah, I'm lucky. Uh, like all my family lives here, so yeah, it's a. It's a be nice, and then when they come visit, um, my mom is was here kind of recently. And my in-laws are coming around the time of my daughter's birthday, and they always say, "Oh, we're we're here to help out," and it, they, somehow I always end up behind. Cause there are these older people who don't understand, you know, the nature of the work, and right, yep. Yeah. You know, I've got my wife's mom coming into my office. Dinner time. I'm like, Tuesdays through Thursdays. <laughs> I'm on my own. <laughs> you work too much. You don't make any money. <laughs> That's not your wife saying that, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I used to get that from my ex. <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> I won't. I won't bring. I'll. It's tough, though. Yeah. 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 You know, I, my mother-in-law one time at Christmas, she said, um, uh, "People were talking about how hard the art business is, or whatever." And I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty hard." And uh, and she said, "Well, that's why I always wanted to marry a man." who had a stable job, and uh, she's never never worked or anything. She's never what? You cut out there for a second. Oh, uh, she she didn't work. She just raised her kids, and you know, she's old school and setting feminism back like ten thousand years. Uh -huh. You know, she. What this is my mother-in-law? She missed that part, but it was a uh, Christmas before last, and she was like, you know, I was worried about. You guys get married, and that's why I always I married a man with a steady job. And I was like, oh man, that's what you get for following your dreams, I guess. Yeah, I don't know that that exists really anymore. Steady jobs. I've had like, I've had jobs that I thought were steady jobs, and then you know, and then they went away. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really old school, you know, conservative Fox News watching. So you know, they think everything is should be how it was when they were young, but, you know, their generation has gone ahead and messed everything up <laughs> for the rest of us. Yeah, my dad's, you know, he's got one of those jobs that has just lasted forever, and he, he, he can basically, you know, he's old enough where he can retire now, but, like, he's pretty knowledgeable in his field, so 
to keep them around, but like I don't know if I'll have that. You know, I'm afraid that I'm going to become irrelevant. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. It's, it's. I mean, there's there's nights that you know I've couldn't sleep because I was just like, God, what am I going to do when I'm homeless? Because, you know, the <laughs> because uh, you know, getting on in years and what happens if I'm like 60 years old and homeless? I mean, I'm being extreme about it, but <laughs> it still crosses my mind. Yeah, I've thought about that too. Let's make a pact never to be homeless right here and now. <laughs> I don't think I would enjoy it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know, man. That that's it's like that's why I feel like after this job and you know trying to do something more like what Jeff is doing and you know making on my own art. I don't know. It just sort of feels like a like it's a do or die time for me or something. Or maybe I'm just being dramatic. I don't know. But. Just I don't know. This the, what I'm doing right now isn't working anymore. Like thirty years ago, if I had run into me, I'd be like, "Hey, guess what? You're going to be making comics and working for comics." I'd have been like, "No shit, that's awesome." But. Yeah, because I remember when you were first talking about wanting to go into like doing children's books, and then, uh, and then when you, you actually started doing it, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then, then I just heard about how bad the business was, and it's like, oh, because you know that's something I kind of wanted to do as well. And then after hearing your stories, I'm like, well, maybe that's not the business to be in. It's so when you go into children's books, my agent is still in children is, is still with is a children's book specific agent. And um, you part of children's books isn't just picture books. A bigger part of it is educational stuff. But doesn't I mean educational stuff doesn't pay very well? I, oh, it pays terrible. Really? Yeah, it's really bad. Like it's um, that's the bulk of the work, and occasionally you get a picture book, and and that's that's like you know all gravy. Um, except for anymore now, you're not getting um, advances. Like, I kind of missed the boat on when people were getting advances in kids' books. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's like comics in a way. Jeez. Um, it's just, um, you know, the same, same, you hear the same, like, buzzwords or buzz phrases. You know, you, you just got to love it. I'm like, well, that's why I got into this business, but now I need to make a living. You know? Um, and it seems like in that business too, you there's so much um, there's so much naysaying about when I first was trying to do it. I guess I should be proud of myself how fast I got in. Yeah, because that's what I was impressed by. Quickly wanted to jump out because I heard it takes a lot longer. But um, then you know it's one of those also you know be careful what you wish for and right and find out like oh I don't like this, but um. You hear, oh, son of a bitch, it's fucked up. Um, you hear all this. Uh, okay. uh, what was I saying? You hear the same kind of kind of buzzwords about like you know you got you just gotta love this stuff and but then there's all these um, kind of like it changes all the time. Like you you hear, hear like. Well, publishers don't want to hear from you as an illustrator if you've written a story. They just they do not want that at all. And then the next day it's oh, that's what they're hiring for. They want they want your own original stories and then and then you hear rhyming books don't sell. And then the next book that wins the new barrier or whatever is a rhyming book and you know, it's just and everything is so safe and sterile. It's not like you know, you you would never get a where the wild things are right now. And then, well, and I take that back. 
because then they tell you, you know, that you can't be too edgy, and um, and then the next book that wins an award is the the one that's, you know, has that special quality like a Where the Wild Things Are, and maybe that one's about you know monsters or zombies or something when, you know, I had just been told no one's looking for that. You know, it's just I don't know. Um, it's a really it's a really frustrating business. It sounds it sounds a lot like uh, not that I've really been in the that business business, but like movies. You know, it's as far as they're just looking for whatever's safe. You know, what's what's been done, and and they, they say you can't do it until it's done. Somebody comes along and does it, and then they just clone it. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, and then yeah, but then three months later, you're derivative. You know, or right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just like that. Like they, the publishers, they, you know, they're so worried about. And also, I'll say this too. The children's book publishers are probably the slowest to get di to go digital, you know, to change their their model, you know. Which I mean, I still like print books better, but I understand that you know, digital now has to be part of your business model. But um, but anyway, yeah, they want the safe bet, and uh, quality is second to the to the dollar because. Children's books go out of print so fast now. Um, like they'd rather make a quick buck because they know they can, um, than make something good that will make them a lot of money over decades, like a, where the wild things are, or Fernand the Bull, or what you know the classics or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just all about quick, safe now. Like. It reminds me a lot of, um, you guys remember when uh, Nightmare Before Christmas was in the theater? Yeah. And it was a complete flop? Yep. And, uh, you know, it was a Touchstone film, which is was a Disney subsidiary, and Disney wouldn't put their name on it, and then it became a cult classic, and now you can't buy a DVD or Blu-ray without Disney's name all over it, you know? Yeah. They were like, oh, we don't know about this. We don't want our name anywhere near it. Oh, wait, it's popular? Oh, well, is, that, is, is, that, is that because of, is that the reason, or is it because now Touchstone's not really a thing anymore? Cause... Well, um, Touchstone was a thing when the very first DVD came out in, like, the 90s. Yeah. And uh, it went from, um, oh, and it just said Touchstone on it, and then I saw another one. Like six months later, and then that's when Hot Topic was like the poser punk store in the mall, and they started selling Jack Skellington stuff everywhere. And um, and then all of a sudden, I saw another release of it that said Disney's. And as far as I know, Touchstone was still releasing stuff at that point. But I don't know. You might be right. I guess I'd have to look into it. But yeah, because I always thought it was weird when because I. I thought originally Touchstone was like because they wanted to make like more adult movies like or like PG thirteen or whatever because and then yeah, yeah. Uh, then after a while they just said forget about it because like Pirates of the Caribbean it just seemed weird because that's not really you know it's a family movie I guess but it's you know PG thirteen but they've got the Disney logo and I remember seeing stuff like that and they kind of I guess they just went away from you know just putting everything under under Disney's banner, I guess is what they do now. Yeah. It's going to be kind of weird to see that Disney logo pop up instead of the 20th Century Fox logo on a Star Wars movie, though. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it feels dirty kind of in a weird way, you know? It does, but I have faith in Disney that I think they'll do a good job just based on what they do with Marvel and stuff, so... Yeah. More than I do with George Lucas, so... <laughs> Right. I wonder when they're going to start, like, um, you know, Spider-Man meets Luke <laughs> and stuff. Oh, that's bound to happen. I think Kermit's going to show up on Dagobah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you wouldn't mind seeing Kermit hanging out on Dagobah. Jeff is here, everybody. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff. I didn't want to interrupt the rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just scaring all these young illustrators away, telling them all these horror stories. <laughs> I was listening for a while. You guys are pretty chipper after an eight-hour show or whatever. 
however long it's been, four hours or seven hours or something. I, I've only been on for like 30 minutes or so. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an hour at the most. Uh, that's cool. I, I'm surprised. I'm, I must have got a second win because I was like dead tired and like yeah. trying to figure out how I'm going to make it through this thing. <laughs> I know. I always come in here and I'm just like, I'm going to do one thing and then I'm going to go back, you know, go to bed, and then I end up staying up till like one in the morning. <laughs> it's like you get that second wind going. Well, I'll probably finish out this hour and then go get a real meal. In yeah. My belly. <laughs> So how's it going? Are you, are you like about but, done with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, surpri surprisingly, eight hours isn't that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a long time to be on camera, that's for sure. I would think, anyway. Yeah, well... Yeah, I made, I made good progress. If this is, you know, essentially as as far as it gets, then I'm I'm happy. You know, it's 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 all sort of penciled in. Um, it's just the inking, which is the easiest part. Yeah, it looks yeah. great for one day. I mean, heck yeah, man! I don't think I can pencil out a whole cover to ink and well, I don't know, maybe, but. That's a lot of work. Good job. Yeah, you know, I did, did like a bunch of tiny sketches, trying to get everything just right. And, yeah. Um, I like the design. I love the type and the motorcycle chick coming off the type up there and stuff. It's neat. I remember you telling me about the idea. It was. It didn't sound like an easy one to to make. You did a good job. Thanks. At least the concept, anyway. Right. You know, um, I, I'm gonna ink it and um, then see, you know, how much, how fast he needs it. Um, if he can give me a little more time, I'll attempt to uh, color it uh, digitally. So. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I didn't mean to take away Kevin's fire. <laughs> <laughs> I got it all out, dude. That was it? I thought the, yeah, what's it called? I thought the, yeah. The uh, Nightmare Before Christmas thing was... Well, was I was talking about when all these companies are going to start looking to hire us and we're all gone. Oh, we're yeah, I did. I was listening for a little while while I was doing my web stuff, and I heard you saying that, and I was like, heck, yeah. <laughs> I was going to start commenting, but I thought, oh, I don't want to stir up trouble. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> yeah. I know, I just can't wait. I can't wait until they can't find ours to make the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be so just can't afford to hire us. I know. Well, that's the problem right now, right? Yeah, that's true. My fucker, just jumping at it. I just got an email which was marked big time private and had the big stamp on it and everything, but I was going to talk about it on my show, but I'll just do it here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, like the new Empire Strikes Back set from Tops. Yeah. For some reason, they just, you know, once, like, once I email you and get you on that list, you get all the emails. So they just continually send me the emails of their big plans and stuff. And I'm always writing back on, like, don't send me cards. I don't want to in on it, you know. And so they're, like, planning a new set. And they, they said, like, you know, you get, I think you get six cards per 50 cards or something like that. Like, you do 50 sketch cards and you get six back as returns. And I was, like, thinking about it later. I went for a walk, and I was, like, thinking. I was, like, I wonder, like, if you did 50 cards, you know, not that I'm thinking about doing it, but if I did 50 sketch cards and just sold them on eBay, like, how would that compare to, like, 
if I sold six of those official set cards, you know what I mean? Because I've never really done any of the official sets. I don't know if I could get, like... You'd probably you probably know. make so much more money <laughs> working on I your I think so. Oh, yeah. Actually, just in my head when I was walking around, I was like, I'd probably be, you know. <laughs> I mean, 50 cards, that's like a lot of money right there. And in the space of, like, the time they want them, you'd be rolling it. So. Yeah. Although, I mean, I've seen some of the licensed people, like, I guess maybe they have followers or something, but, like, sketch card go for, like, 400 bucks, something crazy. Yeah, I've seen them go for, like, $1,500. Oof. So, yeah. See, that might be worth it, but then if you're only, I don't know. I've just, yeah. If you're only doing, getting six back out of 50. There's a chance, yeah. And then, you know, like, there, I know one guy who's a really good artist, you know, and, and he makes about three to three, two to three hundred bucks on each card, which is a hell of a prize. Yeah. But, you know, it's so, not like the, you know, the thousand dollar ones I've seen, so. So how does that now? They don't print those, right? They just put they just put originals in packs. Yeah, that's what sketch cards are. They they have the normal set of like cards, and then they just hire all these artists and pay them like you know between a buck and a couple bucks a card. To that's just ridiculous. All, all these sketch cards. I don't understand the part about giving you six back. But you see it, it, yeah. The price is so low. Who's gonna work for a buck a card? Nobody'd want to do this thing, you know. Right. So they, they came up with this scheme. Like once the cards got, you know, once they saw what was happening with the cards, like on eBay and stuff, because people were pulling out of the packs, selling them on eBay, making all this money. So they return a certain amount of cards, like, like six out of fifty. They'll give give you back to the artist, and then you can sell them. And I think some of them will give it, give you back just the blank. So like you turn them in blank, you get them back blank, and then you sell them as a commission. And oh. so like that's supposedly part of your money, but to me like I feel like that's the that that should be extra, you know. So is it somehow the the paper that they're that you that you draw them on? It's well, that's what makes them valuable. Is that oh. it's like it's like basically a blank sketch card. So the back looks like a Star Wars card, and you know what I mean. Right. So then you get the collectors going crazy over them. Yeah, I, I just didn't understand if they're if they're going to packs of, about giving it back instead of why don't you just keep six for, for yourself? Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think that started because I mean, it's, I'm not real super, you know, I, I don't know everything about it, but yeah. it's like I think that started because people would like I think that's the way they did it at first. They were like, okay, here's six extra cards, just keep them. But then people would like just blow through like their fifty cards, and then their six cards they do like these full paintings. <laughs> so, oh yeah. And then oh, everybody that was opening the pack oh, so were like, they, they don't put the, the cool ones in there. Yeah, you know. Okay, I got it. No, I understand. So they're yeah. That sounds like a horrible uh, business. <laughs> <laughs> There's a a guy. Um, oh, I can't remember his last name now. He's he's on the Arcasters. His first name's Brad. Utterson, maybe? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he, he just started making videos. Yeah, yeah, he's doing, uh, like, yeah. presidential sketch cards, and I think he does he does a lot of sports cards and stuff. Yeah. His stuff looks pretty rad, um, but anyway, he lives here in town. Oh, does he really? Yeah, and, yeah. So I'm thinking about getting in touch with him, seeing if he wants to do, uh, like, a... I don't know, maybe cross promoter videos together, because I want to pick his brain about it, because I that, think that's what how he makes his living. With these companies, you know, I think, yeah, there's some people that do it. It's just, I think it's just a super hard way, and I don't know. I mean, I, I interviewed this other guy. What was his name? I can't remember now. It's been so long, but he did make his living doing sketch cards, and oh man, it was just brutal. And then he would like, he'd always be telling me, he's like, you know, I get all these returns back, and I, it's like I can't make any money doing those either because I got too damn many of these. These sets to do, you know what I mean? They just are all in a drawer, just waiting to get sold. And I don't know. It sounds pretty good when it's like, you know, Star Wars, but how good is it when it's like presidential sketch cards? Right. I got any of those that are going for, you know, fifteen hundred dollars or something. And that's also like, you know, that's not an everyday thing. I think I saw like one. You know, this guy Sean Penn sells crazy high. And I don't know. I've seen a couple other guys, but it's not like an everyday thing. Even the three hundred dollar ones aren't really everyday. Yeah, I, I mean, 
what you're telling me right now is that we just need to all do our own shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think so, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, me too. <laughs> I really messed up taking this job, that's for sure. Oh, man. Yeah. Did you catch, catch the news about Kevin? Sure. Uh, no. Oh, uh, that uh, video thing, he's going to start up the 100 Days of Comics again? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I saw that. Yeah. Just uh, January was like the opposite of how I thought it was going to be. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's just... I don't know. I'll explain more in another video, but um, yeah. when I start up. But uh, yeah, things got pretty dramatic with this job I'm doing, and mm. it was like suddenly my it w it's not going to be done. And by June, like I thought, it's now then like all the way in November, and that's you know I just couldn't. I, I just can't. Not do something of my own, you know. Oh man, I, I know it. I I have I am so pulled that way even now. You know, you want to do your own stuff, and you get some of these bad bad commissions and stuff. You just like you just don't want to do them. Which I hate yeah. to say that. I love all my commissions, but <laughs> <laughs> of course you, but you You know what I mean, though. Yeah, totally. And I, I don't know. And then you get, and then the other things you get other ideas. But it's funny. It's like I don't know. At the end of every month, when I get hungry, then it's all of a sudden I'm like, I just get so gung ho to do commissions. <laughs> it's great. Right. <laughs> it's so back into my work. <laughs> like hell yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm on right now. But towards the middle of the month, I'm like, I gotta figure out something else here. I gotta get another income stream going. <sighs> yeah. I've, I saw that cool Frankenstein card. I, I, I was cruising around Facebook and clicked on you when I saw you in the Skype group, and uh, I saw that one that you posted up. I, I don't think I ever saw that like as a scan. I think I just saw it on the video. That's a really cool. Oh, cool. thanks. Yeah, that's like just a photograph. I didn't even scan it. Oh, really? Yeah, which is stupid because I sold it. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't scan it. But, you know, I can make another one. Yeah. Probably not this year, though. Because <laughs> that's what you know. I was really excited to do was like um, finish this job and start painting again and do the comic and sell the paintings to kind of yeah you know make it so I could do the comic and then um, you know that kind of stuff yeah make shirts or uh, cups I don't know <laughs> other stuff yeah but, uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, this job really messed everything up. Yeah. I know you can do it, though. It's like you you already got a following online, which is, I think, a lot more than a lot of people. And then just the more people I see doing that, you know, it's like with a like combination like crowdfunding and, you know, their store and shit, and then also maybe cons. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I don't know. I'm starting to think it's like... It's like that's the way to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost I, like, you know, why, don't chase, chase. I don't know, tops or whatever. Yeah, it's, you know, when I was doing, like, Big Illustration Party Time and, you know, it's just, I was still holding on to that, like, you know, work for clients and, you know, we were talking about getting clients and stuff and I still get people, you know, kids emailing me, I call them kids because now I'm old all of a sudden, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, students or whatever emailing like, "Hey, I just graduated. Now I don't know what the hell to do." Yeah, you know, and I just want to be like, get a job somewhere and work on your own stuff. <laughs> yeah, work at the grocery store and then, you know, develop. You know, start a YouTube channel and get people interested in your art <laughs> and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. How do I get clients? I'm like, you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> I think like if I was to give a young person advice I'd be like first off don't move out of your parents house right. like hunker in like barricade the door <laughs> you know what I mean Yeah. and, and just 
do not get a job under any circumstances and just you know just try like hell to make make money and I don't know yeah, it'll probably work but I know that's easier said than done when you're like young you want to go out and meet girls and stuff you don't want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> buckle down so yeah that was <laughs> you, I think we already talked about this before if you give me that advice, you're like fuck you old man. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. what we were talking about that with Lisa, and that's pretty much she was like what she was saying. She was just saying it in a real nice way to, to me. Oh She's yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, like, cool mom. <laughs> yeah. So we got a, a thirty-minute warning. Oh okay. I guess it's going to end itself. <laughs> we're at the thirty-minute point. Is that what you said? Thirty-minute warning. Oh, where's Marshall? The, the, hang, the hangout's just going to close on us. <laughs> wow. So we've actually we've hit, the, we've hit the limit, man. It's like we've hit the edge of the world, though, the, the big waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're looking off the edge. That's crazy. <laughs> the one. It's like the end of time space, man. <laughs> I'm scared. What's gonna happen? <laughs> you know, I mean, Scott. Like, how do you um, make all? You know, I don't know if you have a lot of money. I, I didn't mean to like phrase it like that. But how do you make your money? Like, because I know you're like a freelance artist. I mean, is everything that you do is like client work, and then and then the, these clients just hire you? I mean, do you do like logo stuff? Do you do illustration? Like, yeah, I mean, a lot of it. A lot of it does have to do with just because I'm, you know, I'm also a graphic designer, so I do a lot of graphic design stuff. And then most of, you know, most of what keeps me busy is like, uh, like multimedia stuff, like game design, and um, just because I, I kind of, I, I was talking about this earlier, but I, I kind of, I got into working in game design, and and since then I've been able to, you know. Just sort of parlay that into like freelance stuff, doing the same thing, but mm. not always easy. But you know, I, and I'm, you know, right now, I mean, the, the jobs I'm working on are, you know, pay pretty well. So I mean, but you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it, I don't know if I can keep keep doing this, or I'm hoping. You know, you hope that the work you do, people like it, and they'll keep coming back to you. And you, because I've had, but I've had situations where you know, I got hired on to do a game, and then I, you know, there's, they needed extra help, so I, I brought other people in, and they undercut me, and so they booted me out. So I mean, I've had some of that too. So it's like, yeah. So I was worried about, I always worry about that, but you know, it, you know, I yeah. guess it just comes down to, I, you know. I'd rather just, you know, you turn a bunch of stuff down that doesn't pay as well because I know I'm going to regret it if I don't, and then yeah. eventually get a decent, decent enough paying stuff. So I don't know. But, no, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, but yeah, it's mostly you know, a lot of it is kind of graphic design and game design, and like I'm doing these, I'm doing a game now, and then I've got these little, you know what, you know those what emojis are, those little. Characters that you text with, like smiley faces and stuff. Oh yeah. I've got a bunch of those that I'm working on. So. Oh okay. But it's like I don't know. They, the, it's it's really it's difficult because the, these things are so small, and the clients will. Can you show these three people doing this and doing all this different stuff in this little tiny thing that's 16 by 16 <laughs> pixels wide? I'm like, no, yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> it has to be very, very simple. So, I don't know. So, hopefully, we'll get on the same page because, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, every it's like everything has its challenges. Yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just it's just the fact that. Uh, there's money in games, I guess. You know, yeah. and then there's there's still a lot of people that want you to do stuff for free, but totally, you know, yeah. Hopefully, you know. But it seems like every time I get like a good, good job, 
it just goes away, like the company will go under or whatever. So oh, and yeah. they find somebody else. I mean, these companies are constantly, you know, they're all a lot of them are startups, so they'll they'll yeah. you know roll in with all this cash and then they'll run out and then it's that's the end of it. So Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Especially like web design and all that kind of stuff. I think that stuff's still rocking, so uh, that's interesting. I just, I yeah, I, I, I guess I just was wondering. It sounds like the, you know, just like any kind of freelancer's lifestyle. You know, you're always kind of like, I mean, even I do that same thing. It's like my, this, you know, I always look at it like this. This commission could be my last one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until you get that next one, you're always like, where's that next one coming from? I can't see it. You know, that's where, that's where it comes from. And now, just because the the good so things it, are starting to come come by, you. You know, you start taking it. Now I've got too much. I've got all these projects. I got to find time for. You know. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, totally. Get too much on your plate. And I'm not. But I'm like. I'm just. You know. I got to. Well, I got to worry about taxes too, because I like last year it was like. I wasn't able to put it aside as much as I wanted to because like I needed every every cent I was making, you know, kind of totally. you know, pay bills and stuff. So I don't know how much I'm going to owe this year. And oh, once I find that out, then I'll see kind of how much I have, and then I got to figure out. But you know, I'm just trying yeah. to put some money away for when this, you know, <laughs> when yeah. this stuff dies down. It is feast or famine. So yeah. um, I want to mention. I'm going to mention, like, we are running out of time. Um, so Bradley Golden, uh, the guy who hired me for this cover, is in the uh, uh, YouTube chat. And um, so you can go say hi to him. Hey, there. Bradley. Um, hey, and Bradley. I got it. I got it. <sighs> Clicked on me, so he can check it out <laughs> right now. Um, but I can scan it and show it to him better than you can see on YouTube. But uh, yeah, so Bradley, I hope you like it. Um, it's too late to change it. No, um, <laughs> we'll t we'll talk uh, later. Um, I'm probably gonna conk out uh, after this. Um, but yeah, we're clocking in. Yeah, it's like uh, left. So I guess we can talk for a little more. <laughs> I just to are you, are you just gonna run it till it goes out, or are you gonna like actually like stop it like at seven fifty nine or something? <laughs> like count, sounds like he's got a countdown. Thing. I'm actually, but then there'll be a new record that we got to meet. Yeah, stop it at 7:58, Peter. So I can just, it. just start a start a whole other one right after. It. <laughs> yeah, I got one second more than you. <laughs> You're blowing my record out of the water, man. I should have got on here earlier to sabotage the show. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, hang out, hang out for longer. I think, as far as uh, I've seen previously, they can know, go longer than different. eight. It's different. Hmm. Oh, you mean like a normal in hangout? The, in a live typical event. normal hangout. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they've gone ten hours or so. You know. Hmm. Well, Marshall was telling us about that twenty-four hour one. Uh, one day, I don't know if that was on the show or if we were just talking on Skype, but I've never seen one go that long, but maybe. Let's do it. i got a lot of pages to do. Yeah, I know. I, that's <laughs> I get so damn much work done doing this stuff. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm almost like starting to think about, like, well, maybe I should do, like, one at night and <laughs> Like it's just like the office. Everybody knows where to find me. Just like on Google. <laughs> <laughs> you should do them at night, so I, because I can't get up. <laughs> yeah, I see you sometimes, and that's what I figured. That's why I've never really sent you an invite or something. But. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, 
I'm not currently trying. <laughs> right. I'm going to try to change my schedule from being super late. But don't you got to because your your daughter's up during the day? I mean, that's how it was with my son. Like, during the yeah. day, it was tough to work. Um, yeah, I mean, I can. I only have, like, three full days. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I start work again when my wife comes home, but, you know, if I don't hang out with them or her at least a little bit, that puts a big strain on things at home. Oh, yeah, totally. So, you know, but if I can... Because my wife, when she comes home, she's she doesn't stay up very much later. Yeah. So, you know, if I can change my schedule to where I'm getting up, like, a few hours before them instead of staying up a few hours after they've gone to bed. Yeah. You know, then I'll, I'll be closer to, like, my wife's schedule. and Yeah. You know. You guys can actually sleep together once in a while. I yeah. have that problem. <laughs> yeah. And you start getting the like... They're going to bed at like two different times. It's like, it's how long I like, get out of your marriage. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I don't know. But we've always had that problem because I've always like stayed up late, you know, even when I was working and painting and that was just my thing and... For a while, I switched it. I, I'd get up at 3 in the morning, and I'd work before work, but I don't know. There's something about that. Like, I always had a hard time, which I guess you don't go to work, so maybe you wouldn't have this problem, but I would always start thinking about work while I was drawing, and I would kind of get my mind off it, you know? Because I'd be like, oh, yeah, i got to get to the paint store. i got to go over here. i got to do this. And then all of a sudden, I'd be like, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I should go make my lunch. I don't have to buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Yeah. I wonder if the if, if the hangout will boot us out when it goes to eight, or if if we'll actually still be in here, it'll just be off. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty exciting, guys. <laughs> We're in the unknown territory. <laughs> oh man, I'm going so trying to go so fast on this. I'm finding all the mistakes I'm making, but those pages look great, though, dude. Thanks, man. This is my phoned-in style. <laughs> Even though it's. My my buddy Sean, he's he's got that same deal where he he's got his super fast like style where like I penciled four pages in one day, you know, and it's yeah. like it's funny how good they are though, you know. I'm always like, damn, that's just. I guess I like your other stuff better, but I think it's just because of what you're drawing, not because you're like that much is better. better. <laughs> <laughs> but like because I just have the three full days. Yeah. Um. Kind of. Like doing the numbers of time versus like when I'm getting paid and stuff, I have to absolutely, in order to make above minimum wage, I have to do a page from blank page to completed in ten hours. Ah, damn. So um, this isn't a style I developed beforehand. <laughs> this is a style that's just coming. You it's know coming I mean? now. Because yeah. when I pencil, it's super rough, and then I fix stuff in inks. If I mess that up in inks, I don't have time to fix it. So then I try to mask it in color. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not, like, if I take the, the letters off, I'm not doing full pages either. So I letter for, I letter from thumbnails. Yeah. So that I, so that I um, know not to waste my time drawing. That's actually pretty smart. First few pages I did for this, I was, I was doing full art. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't have time for that. <laughs> How many pages are you in? Uh, what is this? Twenty-two. Man. So I have 122 of story left, and then it's a 160-page book, and I don't even know exactly how many pages I have to fill of those. Yeah. So even when you're not doing 100 days of comics, you're doing 100 days of comics. Yep. 
<laughs> and it sucks because I, I've been trying to get to four pages a week instead of three. Yeah. So that I'm not working on this until November. And so that I can, like, you know, maybe hoard some pages that I'm supposed to turn in. Yeah. You know, and take take some time off. Because, like, I know we have a couple trips planned that, you know, we've got friends getting married and stuff, and I can't miss it, but the yeah. schedule that I'm on right now doesn't allow for anything else but this. You know, I can't get sick, I can't, you know, and that's going to happen. i got a kid, yeah. you know? <laughs> totally. That's cool. I can I can tell you this that will happen that happened to me last weekend so yeah over it <clears throat> she just went to this um like you know the weather in Portland sucks and she just went to this uh, indoor playground uh -huh. <laughs> um today and when my wife was leaving the house with her and telling me where I was like oh great can you bring me a <laughs> bottle of whiskey home tonight so I can just pound that and hopefully I won't get sick. <laughs> Because otherwise, Does that help? <laughs> they say it helps. I mean, it it makes me feel good while I'm drinking it. But yeah, <laughs> um, well, maybe that's why I feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, I heard. I I mean, you know, it's probably an old wives' tale, but I've heard like, oh, you know, drink whiskey right when you're starting to feel the effects. It'll kill it. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm sure it's an old wives' tale, but yeah. Uh, but without fail, every time, like. <laughs> This time of year, you know, I take her anywhere that there's other kids. She yeah. gets sick, and the next, like, you know, that night or the next morning, I've got that tickle in my throat, and I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. I know. It was like we're, as soon as Tristan went back to school after, after Christmas, it was like the first freaking day he comes back. He's, like, <laughs> coughing. and I'm like, it's like a first day. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just crazy. Yeah, and all my friends, um, you know, who had kids before me, and for a while there, like, I don't know, I, I guess I was, like, flabbergasted about it or something, and I'd be, post on Facebook, I'd, you know, stupid status reports, like, God damn it, I'm sick again. <laughs> like, yep, welcome to the club. <laughs> it's going to happen all the time now. <laughs> That's your life now. Yeah. She gets a little older. <laughs> yeah. When does it stop, Scott? Apparently it doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> well, as far as getting sick or what? <laughs> well, from your kids, like constantly. I, you know, I'm, I, I really, my kids are always getting sick, but I don't get sick that often. Maybe twice a year, and usually a lot of times it's just for like a day. But this time, it was, I mean, I. It started Friday and went through the weekend, and that's still dragging on. So I, I don't know when it when it does get me, it gets me pretty bad. Mm. And probably my problem is I keep trying to just work through it. And if I would just like relax and like sleep, yeah, it'd probably go away quicker. But yeah, but then you have an angry client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that does, and I have yeah. such a hard time because when I'm miserable, I almost there's something about it when I I just feel like going and drawing and being miserable. <laughs> so it's like I think it's just it's like a worse thing because then I get I'm even more tired, you know. So you get even more run down, you get even more sick, and pretty soon you just die. <laughs> it's, it seems to be like this past year a lot. A lot more people were sick for a lot longer. You know, I know I was, and I only get sick once a year. Yeah. You know, typically. But it seemed I was attacked on the left, on the right. I don't know. <laughs> well, that was like watching some... Which this probably isn't a topic I should bring up, and you know, as the video's ending. But I was like watching some YouTube video about this guy that got some kind of bug in his stomach from. He said it was from petting animals, which kind of freaked me out because I like to pet my dog and stuff. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like yeah, some kind of weird bug that I guess like most people have, and they get it from animals and. I don't know. He did all the stuff to get rid of it, and then he like killed all the bacteria in his stomach, and then that made him even more sick. And 
It was a, little, uh, a horrible thing. <laughs> I brought that up. <laughs> just, I was thinking of your cats. I just, you know. Your cats seem to be your bane, Peter, so I just figured those. They had to be to blame for you. <laughs> I'm getting rid of my pets. <laughs> I won't be <laughs> Yeah. I'll just be sad and lonely instead. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll have to. You'll have to so, talk to um. <laughs> well, <laughs> we talk. <hey>. Um. <laughs> Since, since this is coming to end, I mentioned um, this was my own personal eight-hour challenge. Uh, this is creating art number 14. Um, and this is a cover for Victoria Black, a new book that's going to be coming out through Second Sight Studios. Uh, Bradley Gordon Golden is a, the head honcho. Um, and you can follow me everywhere online at Pimaliati, uh, but go become a patron. Um, I got a new patron, um, uh, her name, Nikki, Nikki, from, uh, Arcasters became my patron. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Nikki. And uh, every, every dollar counts. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a dollar a month or more if you choose. Um, it's full of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm starting to feel country. <laughs> <laughs> it's only big hours, folks. <laughs> so anybody want to, uh, you can do all do shoutouts, we have enough time for that. Uh, Kevin? Sure. Um, KevinCross.net. And, uh, yeah, YouTube somewhere. Monkey, <laughs> uh, YouTube slash monkey mod <laughs> comics, I think. Something like that. Yeah, the other uh, but if you type in Kevin Cross, you'll come up. And uh, Scott Circling? Yeah, uh, I'm uh, Cirkworks on the interwebs. Wherever you find your interwebs. <laughs> and mad science. Yeah, man. <laughs> and Jeff Lafferty made it in. Yeah. JeffLafferty.net. Peter will be hanging out with me in four hours. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we probably have approximately eight minutes. I'm just going to let it end on its own. We'll see what happens. Okay, cool. It's, it's like, um, what is that, Seinfeld episode? Like, the tank says empty, but the cream <laughs> says keep going. That's a great one. They're all like. (laughs) (laughs) Can you see it's um, counting down? I just wonder how many more minutes we got. No, it it just gave me a thirty minute warning, and that was approximately. Um, I think it might have been. 28 minutes after the hour. So it might end at 58. Yeah. This reminds me of, like, I don't think it was, like, the last episode of Lost, because I don't think I ever saw that one, but there was, there's there been a couple, like, where, you know what I mean, they're all kind of, like, waiting for something to happen. Yeah, they're kind of waiting right now. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, it's like tomorrow <laughs> I start my show, we're, like, in 1969, we have the internet for some reason. What the fuck? 
I'm just kind of disappointed because I still wanted to complain about <laughs> the art world. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna no, find you, Kevin. <laughs> I'm gonna find you in, like your young self, and I'll be like, Kevin, you don't want to go in the art. You'll be like, fuck you, old man. I'm like yeah. telling you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> You're not my dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, have, we'll have to do another uh, art cast through this, maybe next week. Um, when my schedule clears up a little. Yeah, we got to start doing the show. Um, the night show again. Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you're, you're keeping it going pretty good. Um, yeah, Kevin said uh, your show was too early, bro. So. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have on, like, you know, on some of the days I'm working. Yeah. He's earlier than you. Like, yeah, I only did it because, Mike, we were doing it at 3 in the afternoon, but then... I don't know. He was bitching about having to. It wasn't. I don't know. It just was. It wasn't a very good schedule. So then we switched it to like after he gets home from work. And then he complains about that. So <laughs> I don't know. There, there is no good time. And I switched my whole thing because I was totally on a night schedule, and now I'm like getting up at like six in the morning, which I <laughs> never liked. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't know. So that's what I, I think. I, I just naturally to go to that night schedule. I don't know why. I do too. It's just years of it, though. Yeah. At least for I me. think that's it. Because like, I've, I've had night jobs for like so long. <laughs> like yeah, since I've not been in high school, it's been <laughs> like this. <laughs> I think I graduated high school twenty-five or twenty-six years ago. Yeah. No. Well, we're moments away now. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm bummed I didn't finish this page. Is there anybody around. like watching anymore? Or does anybody got the chat open? I was just curious. It's it's still alive. It's still going. Tristan Grant. Um, man. He's up in the morning. He's up at night. He's yeah, always here. Christian's in the... Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, feel, I feel like with this, for the first time that like I'm, I'm paving the way for others. <laughs> like, nobody's <laughs> done this to my knowledge. Yeah. So... <laughs> nobody's tried to break Google yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep turning that knob, Peter. Let's see what happens. <laughs> that will be the first. <laughs> Tristan must be working on something tonight. Tristan? Tristan, oh. wait. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah. I looked at my son. I'm like, I think he's sleeping. <laughs> What's your kid doing right now? <laughs> but Tristan Grant, he said, I used to start work at 4 a.m. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. That's like one of those jobs that I really hated those jobs where you'd start late enough that you'd go into the next day. So, like, like, when you got home, it was, like, broad daylight in the morning and everybody's doing stuff. Because then it's, like, just impossible to go to sleep, you know? Yeah. If I could get home before, or like... Amazon. Yeah. Sun, sunrise, I could go to sleep. But it's, like, even if it was, like, 5.59, but, you know. Once it got, the sun went up, I just, like, wrecked it. Yeah, it was not fun in Amazon working nights, uh, yeah. mostly because it just ruined my schedule. I mean, it completely, I had no schedule. It's like, it just turned me upside down. Yeah. 
what were you doing there? Just like picking and packing boxes and stuff? Yeah, I was um, Chris Plant. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's essentially you put a bunch of items in, in a box, seal it up, throw it down the line. Mm. That's wild. It's, you know, it's, it's work, hey. You know, it's, it's totally good pay. Um, was it actually good pay? That they, they expected you to uh, do it at a certain speed, and I was like, there's no way. My best week was barely what you want. <laughs> yeah. I know, that's always... Yeah, it, 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 